Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, June 26, 2023. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 signed into law on March 29, 2023, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st of 2025. Uh, before we begin, please note the following. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to say to the crowd in the room, it's wonderful to see everybody. This is the first time in anyone's recent memory we have been this kind of standing room only. Um, unfortunately, our usual overflow room is, is not available because of the ceiling being unreliable, and we have funds in line <laughs> to, uh, to address that uh, because of some water damage. Uh, however, if anyone is not comfortable standing, you're welcome to stay here. If you want, there are some chairs downstairs in the hallway outside of the what is formerly the coat room and is now the ACMI control room. It's not air conditioned, but you can hear. So he's got a speaker there. So uh, if, you want to, if you need to be seated, um, you can listen to the proceedings uh, from that space just down the stairs from here. So uh, regarding the hybrid format, first note that this meeting is being conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI, so you're all on TV. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others, so if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. That goes for both Zoom and in person. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment. Those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching in ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight, and there is a lot of it. So let's get moving. Uh, as a, an advisory, we have an initial uh, presentation. Mr. Tosti, if you want to take your, uh, your spot there. Um, after he makes a brief presentation for item two, I'm going to take the item for the senior um, uh, item 19, senior parking permit proposal. We'll move that up and take that next because I have a feeling that's what most of the people in this room are here for. <laughs> so, we'll do that afterwards. Uh, but from here, I will turn it on, uh, turn it over to Mr. Tosti. Oh, I've never gotten to do that before. <laughs> for a brief update on a really interesting and important project for the town's history. Mr. Tosti. Thank you, members of the select board. I, I never realized we'd attract such a crowd to hear this presentation, <laughs> but uh, that is great. Uh, what I wanted to do was bring you up to speed on the uh, status of the, uh, the uh, Foot of the Rocks Battlefield Memorial. Uh, there was, uh, I think you have received a, uh, a copy of the master plan. I uh, hope you have a chance to go through it. The first part is actually not that long. It's all the appendices that take some time. Uh, we've, uh, the uh, CPA Committee, com uh, Community Preservation, uh, granted us $50,000 about two years ago to start initial plans. We hired a landscape architect, formed a working group, uh, and then the landscape architect came up with some plans. Working group modified them as we went, uh, came up with two presentations, which are also in the appendices. Uh, we went to two public hearings and got a great deal of feedback uh, and m modified it to come up with what is sort of the semi-final plan, uh, and nothing is cast in stone, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, but we really want to emphasize the important, uh, historic importance of this to the town of Arlington. A rather cynical Lex uh, Arlington uh, historian once said that Lexington battle was a mistake, the Concord battle was a skirmish, Arlington monotony was a battle. And what was happening there uh, was uh, the British were retreating from Concord in disarray. They were rescued by a relief party coming out of Boston of British troops. They were reorganized, uh, fought off the militia in Lexington, and then retreated through East Lexington. Not much of an issue. In Arlington Heights, then monotony, they were confronted with 1,700 militia from 35 companies drawn up in a semicircle, blocking their path back to Boston. Uh, the British have been in this war thing for a long time. They had two field pieces. They uh, turned around their field pieces, started blazing away, houses, rocks, stone walls. 
Uh, the militia were militia. They were just that. They weren't soldiers. They scattered. Uh, and the battle, this became the bloody mile. The battle of monotony all the way through the Jason Russell House and to a certain degree beyond. Uh, we want to tell the story. And uh, not just about the battlefield, but we, uh, from, from all the feedback we've been getting, we want to broaden this out. So we're not going to just talk about the battlefield at this memorial. We're also going to be talking about the people of Arlington or Monotony at that time, about 400 people. Uh, what were they about? What, were their, what was the economics about? Uh, and we have two groups working on this, uh, one from, uh, w focused on the Human Rights Commission, talking about the people of Arlington, the uh, monotony, and the other talking about the battlefield itself. So we have plaques, uh, panels along the edge. We also have an obelisk, uh, and we've basically given them sort of carte blanche to, to get that going. But I also want to mention one other thing that I think should be really important to the Board of Select, the select Board. <laughs> Um, and that is the, the aesthetics and the safety of this area. Now, we all know the problems that we've had at the Appleton Street intersection with, their, uh, with uh, Mass Ave. Well, the intersection of Wall Street and Mass Ave is another area. Aesthetically, it is ugly. It is acres of asphalt. In addition to that, it's dangerous. Somebody crossing at the current crosswalk, which goes to the sort of the point of the foot of the rocks, has to look up and down Wall Street, up and down Mass Ave, people turning. They've got to look in three directions to cross one street. Uh, that is dangerous. What this plan does is take that crosswalk, move it down Wall Street, so you're crossing Wall Street. We only have to look in two directions. You go over, up the steps or on the uh, handicapped access, uh, access, across, and you look in two directions again. So I think it makes a major safety improvement to the area. Now, there's another addition that I'd like the, uh, the select board to think about over the next while, and that is we could make this even safer. Now, this is not tied to the Foot of the Rocks project, but it could be an ancillary project, which is to create a bump out out of Wall Street to Mass Ave. So it comes off of Wall Street directly towards Mass Ave. Now, what this does is it forces, instead of a raceway going back and forth, it forces people coming up, cars coming up Wall Street to make a perpendicular turn into Mass Ave and then make a right or a left. So they have to slow down. It forces people coming up Mass Ave who want to make a right onto Wall Street that they have to slow down and make a right-hand turn. So by creating this bump out as an addition, um, I think it create, could uh, be a major safety improvement to that area, could improve the aesthetics. We could even take the horse trough, which as you all know got destroyed, yeah. or not destroyed, but, and take the horse trough and move it and put it right there uh, so the Public Works Department only has to move it 50 <laughs> feet instead of <laughs> two miles. So I think the foot of the rocks combined with this could create a major improvement to an, an aesthetically challenged area of Mass Ave uh, and make a, a great improvement to the area and improve our history. Our, in, our timetable now is we basically need to raise $900,000 between now and uh, July 1 of next year. The timetable is, if we back up, we want to have this ready and up and running by, uh, by April 19, 2025. Obviously, you're not going to do a lot of construction work over the winter. So if we start uh, construction July 1, 2024, we could finish up by November 30th of 2024, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, several people have told me is very doable. This is all an outside project. It's, you know, there's, there's no houses. There's no thing like that. We could have it all done, but we have to have all the money in place. Now, to do that, we are looking at uh, all sources. We're looking at local sources. We are looking at state sources, uh, earmarks. We're looking at federal grants. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of federal grants in this area, but it's not for construction. But it could be for interpretive work, panels, things like this. Uh, so uh, the timetable is important. We need to have everything in, in place. I wanted to bring the select board up to speed on this as uh, major policymakers in the town of Arlington and hopefully people in the audience uh, we appreciate any suggestions uh, would be always appreciated. A checkbook would even be more appreciated. 
Uh, we hope to have another, we we're planning to have another period, uh, public hearing uh, on a more finalized project in late September, probably even early October. Um, and with that, I uh, uh, welcome any suggestions or, correct, or uh, questions that you may have. And of course, you could always just shoot me an email or give me a call if you have any others. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. Thank you for your championing of the Foot of the Rocks area and its uh, connection to the town. I've been doing a lot of work with the 2025 celebration. Just last month, we went into a regional meeting with Lexington, Concord, and some of the surrounding areas. And it's funny to sit down to them. It's that we're always Lexington and Concord's little brother, little sister, when it comes to historical significance. And they're a fair amount ahead of us in their planning. And it was clear to us from Arlington that we have to, you know, start thinking of creative ways to get once the 2025 celebration comes afoot to dr to attract people from those areas to come to Arlington and I think the Foot of the Rocks project among our other treasures that sometimes get unnoticed like the Jason Russell House and Schwann Mill and whatnot is a really important cog in, in our plan to try to get people to, to Arlington for that celebration so I'm, I'm happy to hear that's in process and you know hopefully we can hit that timeline um, as part of my participation, I started to reach back to my fifth grade social studies lessons and get a little more uh, history. And as we talked in the, the joint meeting, we talked about the different battles of Concord and Lexington yep. and how the bloodiest battle was right here in Arlington. And I, I don't know if that's something that we want to be known for, but it's certainly our history and it's our, our way of, you know, participating in the in the celebration, which is going to be significant at, at the time. And we don't know who's going to come, but it could be whoever the President of the United States is at that time or the Vice President coming through. And we're anticipating millions of people to come to our little area. And we have a lot of planning to do, but um, again, I think this project will fit in very well. I think we will have to have some get creative with both permanent fixes, but I certainly anticipate, you know, if this project's done, it becomes part of our plans for that time. We could make Lowell Street one way for a short period of time just to allow for buses and, and, par and uh, parking there. And we'll come up with safety improvements. It's, it's going to be a work in progress. But I, again, I was very happy to see this coming forward. I think this is a really important project for the town in general but specifically for the 2025 celebration. Um, so I do appreciate your work on this. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And I'll move receipt. I don't know if I do that. Mr. Dickens. I'll second that. And, and I will say I'm, I'm very excited about the additional safety element, um, the bump out. And uh, I read the plan and, um, or the report and, uh, last, well, <laughs> when I was chair, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, early in the spring. And, uh, and I wasn't, I mean, the, the, the whole additional part is new. Any sense of how much it would cost? I, I got a, of the bump out itself. Yeah. I got a rough estimate from a uh, of a hundred thousand. That's not bad. And uh, which which I thought was very doable. Yeah. It, it takes away asphalt. It's it's sort of traffic calming yeah. that whole area. Obviously, more has to be done down in Appleton Street, yeah. which I realize has other issues. But this is a hundred thousand, approximately, that could be done in conjunction, calm the traffic put the horse trough there and sort of make this whole area much more attractive and safe at the same time. Yeah, and it might be eligible for a complete street, as a complete street project. I mean, so you might want to look into that because right now we are, we're doing the prioritization of our complete streets plan. Okay. I mean, and I think this would be an, I mean, something that would be right up that alley. I mean, the price point is right. I mean, um, I'm trying to remember, I, mean, I don't recall any, any, um, projects in that area, you know, but I think, I think that, I think it could work. I mean, it may be that we haven't put any project in that area because it's considered part of that, that corridor, you know, from, from Appleton Street down Mass Ave. But, but still, I mean, if we want to get this done quickly, I mean, I think you might want to look into talking to our, our planning department, the senior transportation planner about that, I mean, and, and you might get like half the funds, I mean, from that, pro from that plan, All right? And I can yes. talk, if you couldn't hear me well, that's why we can talk about it later on, right? I'll talk to sure. you and sure. get that later. 
Mr. No, that sounds great. Thank you, Mr. DeCours. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Tosh, I'd like to thank you for all the work that you've done on this. And you really got this going a couple of years ago with the um, application through the CPA committee for the for the funds to do this study. And, and uh, I encourage everybody who has an opportunity to look at the master plan. It's on our agenda. It's also on the town's website. It is well thought out, and the public process is very impressive in terms of the comments and, and how the project evolved based on those comments. And the last thing I would say is, is I, I couldn't agree more on the, the crosswalk, moving it further down Lowell Street. It, it actually incorporates nicely into your plan, and um, the, the, the plan right now looks great. Moving the boulders to the front. I, I learned a little bit about the horse trough, too. I, I always thought it was there originally. I, evidently, it came from the first parish church yep. and was moved up there at some point. So thank you for the history lesson as well. Thank, okay, you. thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. And uh, just to uh, a motion received by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Lee Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous in favor of receipt. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service to the town and this interesting project. All right. Now, as announced previously, we will now take up item 19, the senior parking permit proposal. Let the uh, proponents come to the table. You would just uh, introduce yourselves for the record, and um, yes. yes, please welcome. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Select Board, um, for taking us on the agenda this evening. I'm Christine Shaw. I'm the executive director at the Council on Aging. Um, this is Pat O'Connell. She is an awesome volunteer, a participant at the community center, and um, a community mobilizer tonight. I think is shown by. Um, how wonderful the response has been. Um, and I just wanted to start by saying thank you. I know this is a crowded room. Um, everybody here are just gifts to Arlington, truthfully. They are thrilled to be presenting this with me um, this evening. And, you know, I think are really excited and motivated by having something to benefit the older adults um, community in Arlington on the agenda of the select board meeting. So. It's pretty exciting for me to see everybody here. Um, so the Council on Aging um, serves residents, as many as you, of you know, um, in Arlington that are over age 60. Um, right now we have about 12,000 residents over age 60 in Arlington, and by um, 2040 it's going to be closer to 14,000, which will be over 30%. It is one of the um, towns in, in Massachusetts that has the highest percentage of older adults, which I always find really interesting, and it comes up a lot in our um, Massachusetts Council on Aging meetings that we have. Um, we, you know, wanted to start off the presentation with a big thank you because um, we just, as many of you know, came off a big renovation at the community center. Um, 2020 to 2022 was a, a huge period of time for us and involved a pandemic, which we were not expecting, but we were able to reopen um, last April 2022. Um, on not a com not the other side of the pandemic, but there were some you know parting clouds in the pandemic and a beautiful new community center to have programming in. It has been absolutely um, unbelievable to see the numbers of people that we are um, seeing in the community center, which is I think why the town supported it, why the select board supported it, and why um, the town made the investment in the renovation. So thank you for that. Um, we are, I wanted to make sure people know that the community center is not a membership driven center. We, anybody can come that is, um, you know, over age 60 for a council on aging program. We don't charge any membership fees. As I said, um, some of our classes have a nominal fee and the highest we charge is $3 for a class or an activity. And we always have, um, scholarships available for people. Um, I did want to share that some statistics that are pre-renovation and post-renovation. Um, in 2020, for example, we have um, 700, um, I'm sorry, there was about 3,400 walk-in social work appointments that we received throughout the year. This year, as of June 8th, and these are fiscal year numbers, so they're about three weeks short of a full year, um, we have about 4,100, so it's 700 new people that came um, this year as opposed to pre-renovation. 
Our transportation program, um, many of you are familiar with, um, is partially funded by CDBG funding. Um, we have about 1,600 additional rides. We have 8,779 as of June 8, um, as opposed to about 7,000 before the renovation. And one number that is why um, there's so many people here and so many people in the community center, it, kind, it really helps show that is that there was a, about just over a thousand events and programs that happened in the center. And this year, as of June 8th, we had 4,420. Um, that is mostly because of the amount of space that we have. We have a lot more rooms we can do things with. We're programming many different rooms at one time before we had to, um, we were pretty limited due to being able to hear in the rooms that were closed off. So um, we've served about 1,400 more unique individuals so far this year. So for just under 4,000 unique Arlington residents um, were served by June 8th of this year. I did include in the presentation, too, two um, pages of just pictures and slides from um, some of the programs we've had. And that was mostly just to show the sheer numbers of people enjoying the community center. A lot of our programs have waiting lists, and, um, and then we are extending to additional sessions of programs because the demand is so high. Um, which is great, and that's, again, why we had the renovation. It's we want people to be coming. We want them to be engaged and um, a part of their community um, in their older years. So the reason um, we are here tonight is, um, as we know, parking was a challenge before. Um, given the numbers that I shared, it's an even bigger issue now. Um, but I wanted to share some of the things that we've done to try to um, – help with this issue during, you know, the, the past, especially few years of frustrations with parking. Um, we first made all um, rides on the Council on Aging vans free of charge to and from the community center to try to encourage more people to take the van. Um, they do, and the vans are packed full every day, but um, they um, absolutely are free of charge, and we encourage people as many, many people that, that tend to do that. Um, we've also hired two additional van drivers so that there can be two vans on the road at all times. Um, we, of course, encourage carpooling, and many of the, um, the residents participate in carpooling. Um, we continue to partner with the local taxi company, Arbel Taxi, to offer discount taxi vouchers or free taxi vouchers. Um, we hold um, rideshare training on um, services like Uber and Lyft. Um, we do MBTA senior Charlie cards, really anything we can do to, to um, decrease the number of individual cars coming to the center, we really try. Um, but many people, for a variety of reasons, do want the independence to be able to drive to the center, park, and come in if they need to. Um, so that is why we are, again, here this evening. Um, this is something we've been talking about for a few years um, with, with, you know, the residents that come in and on the COA board. And we had um, Pat here who mobilized a group of residents to help explore the options because, like I said, we have really tried pretty hard to exhaust some things to, to take the, the sting out of how hard it is to park. Um, and then this, in 2022, Pat found a group of residents and, and peers to explore some of the options. Um, they presented some of the options that they found to the Council on Aging Board in March of this year, and that is how we are um, here today since that. Um, they learned a lot about the um, programs in surrounding towns, and we've done a lot of research talking to those councils on aging and towns on how their programs are run. And um, Pat is now here to present um, some of what, what she found here to you. So let's see they move it over a little bit, yeah. My name is Pat O'Connell, and I have been a resident of Arlington for 59 years. I am representing many Arlington seniors who have asked the Council on Aging Board at their past March 23rd meeting to propose to the town, and now we are asking the town to accept and approve the proposal for senior parking stickers. 
Many of the surrounding towns listed on the following page, which I hope you all received, mm -hmm. have given their seniors stickers. <coughs> I may tell you that it's Belmont, Winchester, Newton, Medford, Watertown, and Lexington. And many of those towns have a big senior parking area. Why do we deserve such a privilege? As Lexington stated, and I was quite impressed with their comment, the general purpose of the program is to act of good, is an act of goodwill for our seniors, something we can do for them without any negative ramifications and without much cost at all. We want our seniors to feel respected and appreciated in the town. We have supported the town for many years. Like I said, I've been here 59. This is my second high school. All the new schools have been in the town. It's not just the schools we're paying for. I'm very happy with the town. I don't complain, I don't complain about the school money. I know the town is only as good as your schools. We have supported the new schools, and yet we have no students in these classes. We're all in our late 60s. 70, 80, and even older. We have good-sized homes. However, should we sell those homes, it would more than increase the school budget because there'd be more children going to the school. We have educated our children here, and many have become productive adults, giving the town a very good name. When you go around and you hear, oh, you're from Arlington? I'm very proud to say, yes, I am. These are a few reasons why we would ask you to implement the senior parking stickers, which the COA would issue. Then we could park on Mass Ave and walk up to the center. Then our time would not be watching a clock so to avoid a parking violation ticket. We see many seniors getting tickets. I can think of five. While we're in a program, you're paying, yes, a nominal fee to keep the fees down with your income, and you go out and you got a $15 ticket. Senior years should be easy years without watching a time clock. And our motto now in the Senior Center is, we earned it. <laughs> <laughs> all the people who worked with me, the many seniors, on the project so it could be brought before you tonight. Lee, Elaine, Jane, Mary, Marie, and so many others who helped passing out the flyers. My thanks also go to Michael Quinn, Chairman of the COA Board, Stephen DeCourcy, the representative of you people to the COA Board, and of course, Christine Cha, the Executive Director of the COA. Thank you. Kind of needs to be underscored how much work and coordination went into this by the by Pat and the group and also the group that's here in the room and in the hall and <laughs> downstairs tonight. So, I Pat mentioned like like you um, saw on your materials the additional towns who do have um, senior parking sticker programs as Pat called them, um, and I'm happy to answer questions about those. There was a kind of a snapshot of them in your packet. Um, but right now, I wanted to go into exactly kind of what we're what what we're thinking or what we're proposing for a parking permit or a parking sticker program, um, and um, then we can go from there. But as Pat mentioned, the program could be managed and implemented by the Council on Aging Department. Um, we're proposing a pilot program, a two-year pilot, um, and. In that program, interested residents who are age 60 plus would need to visit the Council on Aging either during designated hours or applying by mail or online. Various other towns had success with different models and we would look into that. Um, we would be limiting to one sticker per address. 
Um, and they would need to provide proof of address, age, and vehicle registration. Um, we would be not charging to receive the sticker. Um, and the Council on a Aging would be managing the database and renewal process. Um, vehicles that have this sticker affixed, so not a hang tag, but a sticker affixed to the car, um, would, would receive the following benefits. Um, not being charged while parked at metered spots or in municipal lots within Arlington. Not being ticketed for exceeding time limits along, along Maple Street and Academy Street, as long as the vehicles were legally parked otherwise, <coughs> of course. Um, and this is the piece that assists with the parking around the community center. And when Pat mentions the tickets that people are getting are usually on um, those streets. Um, the parking stickers would not allow for overnight parking in any situation, and they would need to be affixed to one vehicle and not shared between uh, family members or people within the same house. Um, people participating in the program would need to sign a document agreeing to the terms and conditions of the program and outlying restrictions, um, which, which we would do as we registered individual people for the program. Um, I also just wanted to mention some considerations that went into um, the, the, the proposal and kind of the thoughts through this process and speaking with other towns. Um, we recognize that the program will certainly not solve all the parking issues at the Council on Aging and the Community Center and 27 Maple Street or the center of Arlington. Um, but as Pat so nicely um, read that quote from the Lexington um, representative when they were advocating for their program, um, that it's really an act of goodwill and something that we can do for our older adults without negative ramifications, not asking them for anything in return and giving them um, a benefit. Um, we also recognize that training for parking enforcers would be necessary and our COA staff would be happy to um, lead or assist with those efforts. And I've spoken with um, Corey Rateau with the police about how, how this might work. Um, also, I wanted to mention that, and I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, really the lack of parking is a main reason that people give us when we say, why did you stop coming or why haven't you come? Um, it, and the center of Arlington is hard to park in. We, we all know that. It's not, not, not something people don't realize. But um, really the older adults who are spending time socializing and participating in our programs are engaged with their community. And many say that they come every day, no matter what, because it helps with their, their mental health. And what we learned over the pandemic, and we knew this before, but it became even more exemplified, is that social isolation is, is detrimental to people at all ages. And as people age, staying involved with their community, coming to a place like the community center to participate is, is really important. So we want to try to get to deter any barriers from keeping people um, from coming. Um, also, I wanted to make sure to note that the residents that we serve, and I don't always know if this is um, as, a parent, as a parent as it should be, um, many, most are on um, fixed incomes, but more than half are on a low to moderate income range. Um, unfortunately, every week we have people who get a $15 or so parking ticket, which doesn't sound like much to some people, and I completely understand the rationale of, well, if you're coming for a free program, you get a $15 ticket, it's still only $15, which is cheaper than a gym membership. Um, but it's really unaffordable to the people we serve. Um, and it is, it, it's just a financial um, piece that a lot of people don't truly understand. Um, I also wanted to mention that we are limiting to one sticker per address because we completely acknowledge that driving personal vehicles is not the way of the future. Um, but we want older adults who really seek the independence to be able to make a choice to drive if it works better for them to be able to make that choice if they would like. Um, and just really in closing to say, you know, Arlington invested in the renovation so that it could be, the center could be used. Um, and a key piece of, you know, dealing with keeping our older adults in Arlington and, and everywhere um, engaged and avoiding social isolation um, is really important and that's really my main reason for 
for putting, putting the proposal out there. Um, I also briefly wanted to ask Michael Quinn, who Pat mentioned, um, he's our Council on Aging board chair. For those of you um, who aren't aware, just to come up and say a couple words. So <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Quinn. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, Michael Quinn, uh, 15 Shawnee Road, Precinct 10. I am the chair of the advisory board to the Council on Aging. Um, and we view our role as you know, trying to support Arlington seniors uh, in any way possible. Um, that was that my question is for broadcast. Just for AC. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if, if everybody, I if we can kind of keep the, the conversation down, that'll help people in the back of the room hear what's being said. I got a teacher's voice. I can speak a whole lot Do louder. It. <laughs> Um, we view our role in the advisory board as supporting Arlington seniors and working with the Council on Aging. And um, I've been on the board now, I think this is my sixth year. This is one of the really great proposals that has come to us. It did not come from our board. It came from Pat and, and the people with Pat who had looked around at the other towns. In March at our meeting when, this was when they brought this forward, we just thought, can we implement this tomorrow? This is just such a wonderful proposal. Um, in terms of all of the details of it, I think that Pat and, and Christine really covered it all quite well. The only thing I would want to add to that is the sooner we could get this implemented, the better. And if after review of having the program in place for a while, there was some way to expand it or improve it or make it better, I would hope you would give that um, due and fair consideration. Um, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent presentation. I'll now uh, turn to the members of the board. I think we'll start with their liaison to the Council on Aging, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank everybody for coming this evening um, and, and uh, showing you support for this program. I have to say for myself, I was convinced on March 23rd when Pat made the presentation to the Council on Aging Board, but it, it's, um, it, I think it's a wonderful program. I think it, it really truly would be an act of goodwill to support this. Um, I have a few other comments, but I also want to recognize other members of the Council on Aging who are here this evening and thank them for coming. I see Mary is here, Michael is here, Nancy, I believe, is here as well. Might be a few others. And um, I have truly enjoyed being the, the, the liaison to the, uh, to the advisory board to the Council on Aging. And as, as far as this um, project is concerned, um, I was really impressed with the amount of homework that was done in, in, in looking at the other, yeah. the, 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 the other communities. And it, and it just made a lot, of, a lot of sense to me to, to really um, go forward with this. The, the one thing that I, I did see from other communities, and hopefully we can talk about this among other members, is um, nearly every other community does this program for age 65 and above. I know it will be served age 60 and above, and as a person, if we do a two-year pilot who actually would be within the pilot group before the end of the period, um, maybe 65 might be for consistency with the other communities. There's nothing else. I'm, I'm fully happy to support the, the, the whole thing, but the other aspects of it make perfect sense to me, parking throughout the town, not just around the community center. I had a few questions early on about Maple and Academy Streets because it was concerned if you're in a program and you run late, um, you don't want that ticket if you go, go past that four hours. And we want to encourage people to come to the community center. I do note that Newton, for example, has a program on a side street near their senior center where they allow for permit parking throughout the day. So um, I'm going to move approval of the proposal um, with the only caveat I, I, I um, I think 65 or over may be, for consistency, the, the, the right way to go for now. But if we see that there's more demand, certainly willing to, to expand that. Um, but a two-year pilot makes perfect sense. Um, Ms. Shaw has been very gracious in terms of agreeing to implement the program through the Council on Aging, working with the Treasurer, well, not even with the Treasurer's Office, working with the town um, to get people signed up. I don't think that some communities charge for the sticker. I don't think we should be doing that here. So I agree with the, the, the period of time you receive a sticker uh, for no charge. So on that basis, um, I move approval. 
Um, Mrs. Mahan, we haven't heard from you this evening. Okay, I'm taking you. a page from the moderator. <laughs> uh, I will uh, definitely second that, um, and I agree with not uh, charging for this, uh, as well as the two-year pilot and exploring um, beyond that. Um, and thanks to everybody who's worked on this. I would just ask, and I know you've had conversations with um, Officer Corey Rateau, so I'm sure you all have already discussed this, that you have sort of a uniform or an agreed upon spot for where those stickers that have to be affixed go, just for traffic enforcement, um, and that it has to be affixed and not on a placard or a cardboard or, or anything like that. And then the other thing that, I, that I'd like to know, just for information's sake, not for criticism or wanting to oversee it, but when you all think it's appropriate, six, nine, or even 12 months, but maybe six or nine months, just sort of a report back to the board of, you know, how many stickers went out, you know, what the policies are in terms of, you know, where it should be. Um, as well as um, maybe again at the either the nine or the 12 month um, process or, or 12 month and 24, some ideas that I know you all probably have already started talking about um, at the community center and at Galeans and everywhere else <laughs> that I see you all um, about uh, opportunities to expand this program. Um, so d just so the board can know a as an FYI or maybe more appropriately through our liaison, Mr. DeCourcy, um, he can bring that back to the board because um, we're going to talk about parking later on tonight, and not your parking, a different parking. And one of the things for me is um, I totally get that, you know, a dollar is five dimes and, and ten nickels. You know, my parents never owned a home. I knew exactly we had put it on the tab and most of the s small stores here in Arlington, I know the block of cheese that they won't cut for you, which is really embarrassing trying to cut that. So I totally get what a $15 ticket means. Um, and God forbid you get two. I mean, that's probably six to 12 months of your extra spending right there. And it really is. Sometimes when I tell people that story, I think they think I'm exaggerating, but it's not. So um, we'll gladly second Mr. DeCourcy's motion uh, I'd like to start it also at, at 65 and up. Um, would like that um, sort of mini report, just so the board knows uh, in terms of where you decide with the police department and with the uh, Council on Aging, where it will be affixed. Um, and I like that you're saying one um, sticker per household because the board is really trying to, you know, look to the future, alternative modes of, of transportation, but I know certainly for the community center, it's, it turns into a job sometimes when you, when you have try to find versus getting in your own car, getting down to the appointment that you need. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gorsi, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in my excitement to move approval, one other thing I didn't mention, um, and I talked to Ms. Shaw about this in terms of an implementation date, and we had talked about a date no later than September 1st um, to, to, to implement this. Take a little time to develop um, the application process and, and, and just administering things. But I think we discussed that that we thought was a, a doable date, so just uh, so the board knows that. Mr. Dickens? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so, yes, I, I support this. I mean, although I was fine with 60. But, and so, so then I have a question. Why was 60 chosen as a number? And, and would you uh, go, yeah. yeah, and you might as well hang out there because we may have other, okay. other questions, yeah. Just to move the microphone over to you. Um, so all of our programs through the Council on Aging um, are for adults age 60 and above. We do have um, an, a, a program for income tax prep through the AARP, and that is six, age 65 and above. That is the AARP age. Um, but all of the Councils on Aging are um, 60 or above, and in Arlington, our office is our programs are available for 60 and above. So that's why it was just for consistency. <laughs> I knew there's some rationale behind it. And, and if you could stay, this, uh, it would be great. You know, so, so and, and I will note that this was part of the um, age-friendly, dementia-friendly um, plan, I mean, and, and along with that was um, um, a recommendation for um, spots that are devoted only to seniors, I mean, um, in that area. Are we doing that now? 
Um, yes, this is, you know, this is an effort towards that. Yes, um, okay. we do have our lot that is for the entire, you know, building and neighborhood behind our, our, um, our building, but the, the spots aren't necessarily designated for seniors only. This, this is, you know, really in an effort to make some senior parking available. Okay. All right, so, so that's a possible next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so um, how much carpooling goes on now um, with people coming to the center? I think a decent amount. We have a lot of our programs that are on the bigger side are in the first half of the day. Yeah. And I do know a lot of the seniors that come for a 9 a.m. exercise class and another one that's at 11 a.m., many of them park in you know their neighborhood side streets and then will take one car. Um, a lot of people will, you know, say, I'll pick you up on, on this street and truly because they want to, but also because they have to. And by the time they get there, there probably is only one or two spots left. Right. So right. a decent amount, I would say, and right. I always hear it being discussed. So. His, his little geeky, you know, transportation, transit question. Do they, do they ever carpool and then take the van? In, mix, you know, in one visit? Yeah, yeah, like so a bunch of them get together at a location and then they, they get, get, because that might make the van yeah. more, more efficient. We've talked about that before, the, the thought of having kind of van bus stops yeah. type. Um, and we have so far been able to pick up everybody at their individual homes on the van, yeah. but it has been discussed and it would absolutely be possible. And there are some times, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it, that the van will stop at one address and pick up two people. So. Because yeah. I mean, right now the MPO is working on his coordinated human transit you know, and, and um, transportation plan. And I think any yeah. things along those lines, I mean, like ideas I mean, that could make that work better, I mean, and certainly they are in favor of doing pilots. I mean, and, and so you might be able to find some funding I mean, for, for creative ideas for helping to get I mean, people who need you know, transit, especially elderly people who need transit around. Um, just a couple more. Um, um, Short questions, you know, uh, and, uh, so, so you mentioned that it's hard to park in Arlington now, in the center now. How is this going to help with that? So, you know, I think the, what it's going to do is help um, the, the seniors that are in, in Arlington park without having a fee and then park in the streets around the community center without the um, time restriction that they're getting parking tickets for. Right. Um, I think that we can't build a parking lot to create more parking, right. and that's what usually what I tell people when they come right. in and say, this is awful, the parking's terrible. And I say, we're trying to get creative because we can't build a parking lot anywhere around here that I can see. If anybody has an idea, I'd love to, we'd love to hear it, but um, we have to get creative in how to address the parking issues. So I think this is really our creative way of trying to do the best we can when we can't make more parking spaces magically appear. Right. Um, I don't think it solves all the parking. Right. And, and Mrs. Mahan can wait, but I can't, you know. So I'm kind of interested in what if some of these other ideas I mean, that you're thinking about, uh, you know. I mean, I, mean, I know we talked about maybe, maybe the, the, the um, dedicated spots, I mean, but you said that this pilot I mean, could lead to some other ideas that your pot, that part of the pilot is to perhaps give you some other ideas? It could, yeah, no, I definitely think it could. And I, we're, you know, discussing with other towns on what they're doing through, through their senior parking sticker projects. And I think what we'll see over the one or two years that we're trying this out um, <clears throat> is what actually happens and how many, um, you know, people are now going to park on Maple and Academy that might have been parking elsewhere because they won't get a ticket. And just really the domino effect of, of what we can learn from this is I think what will create those new opportunities and new ideas. Um, I don't have anything really new or exciting at this point. <laughs> um, but I think that it could, it could probably come out. And like you said, we're constantly applying for grants. We're constantly trying to rework um, how we're using the vans. We have the whole rideshare platforms now, um, and we're always looking for different accessible transportation options. The accessibility piece is huge, that there is not that many accessible um, transportation options outside of our vans, truthfully, and, and the MBTA ride. So um, 
that is a piece that I would love to focus on um, next. And before the pandemic, Uber was doing a great job with wheelchair, wheelchair accessible vehicles. Um, but now there's almost none oh, really? um, oh. that, I, that I've seen recently. So oh. just kind of looking for ways to expand on that and um, just constantly offer more transportation because it is, it's necessary for sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Biggins, did you have any, Mr. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the presentation. This is very exciting. Um, my question, which you answered from Ms. Diggins in comment, was similar, is that, I mean, there's two ways I look at this. One, the meters in Arlington Center, and one, the parking on Maple Street. And it seemed to me that the age 60 was directly related to the fact that the programs are 60 plus. So I'll go with what the, the board, what the majority of the board wants to do, but I'm also fine with 60 because it, I think to some extent, because it's not just over on Maple Street and Academy Street, that's not a revenue issue. It's not parking meters, it's a time issue. And to say that some participants in the program can park there unlimited for if it's, I don't, I don't if you have four hour, six hour programs and some can't, I think is a little inequitable. I would say as far as parking in the center, and I'm actually not going to be in the uh, in this time frame during the, during the pilot. <laughs> I got a few more years to go, but I think from that perspective, you say yeah, you know, I think 65 is a good day for the meters. But I think to cut in with the multiple stickers would be difficult in enforcement. So again, I, I will go with whatever vote yes on whatever the majority of the board puts forth as a motion, but. I'm also fine with 60 just because of, for that reason, I think it creates a little more equity in the programs that are being offered. Whereas it sounds like a lot of the rationale here, we hear a lot more about the community center, community center than Arlington Center and the parking to make it a little more accessible for people. So that said, I mean, again, I, I think this is an amazing program. Um, when we first implemented the meters in Arlington Center, the purpose was to create parking. And because a lot of people from the businesses were parking on these these spots, but you know, I think it's very important to make it easy for seniors to use our businesses in Arlington Center. And a lot of people drive by if you don't, can't find convenient parking. In some of the per, the municipalities that have done this, do they have? I know you mentioned senior-only parking spaces. Like we've had, I've had a lot of conversations with people where I've said we can't magically create parking. It's, it's just not there in Arlington. But if we were to say in Broadway Plaza, take two or three spaces and list senior permit parking only, I mean, are any programs, any if you're aware of, uh, do any municipalities use those methods? Um, I think that is a really great idea. But um, I don't think that they have had specifically designated senior parking spaces because in most of these towns around their senior center or community center, they have huge parking lots. Um, so <coughs> it's interesting because their parking permit program is more, like we heard from Lexington, um, a token of appreciation for the seniors. The Lexington Community Center, if, if you've been there, has more parking than all of Arlington <laughs> put together. <laughs> so. I think the unique senior parking spaces haven't been as necessary in those towns, but I could look to see if in communities that are, you know, have more meters or less parking overall, maybe like a Somerville or if they have, I haven't heard, but I think it's really interesting and could only benefit. So. I don't want to create more work for you. So <laughs> I think that's something that we can take on if, if we vote the permit, the program through as I'm just kind of spitballing ideas, if we have a pilot, you could create a couple spots, you could designate areas in Arlington Center where you're not getting, we're not getting meter re revenue anyways, so you get, designate those spots, maybe around the community center, senior sticker parking only from, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., which maybe is the, when you have most of your, pro I don't know when your programs are, but then, you know, when a town meeting, we need right. those spots back for when the town hall gets. So I, I think this idea, once we implement the program, mm -hmm. then we can kind of spitball some ideas how to improve the program. We don't have to wait to the end yeah. um, in, in order to do that. 
But I think it's a great idea. I think it is very well deserved. Um, and I think, uh, and thank you for the presentation. Thank you to everyone that worked on this. Um, Ms. O'Connor, during your presentation, I kept looking and said you shine very brightly on the ACMI feed with your wonderful green jacket. <laughs> we all look very dull behind you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works, but um, again, happy to support this, and I think it's well deserved, and I look forward to the results. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question for Ms. Uh, Ms. Shaw. Do you know off the top of your head um, of the 3971 unique individuals serve approximately how many of them are 60, uh, 60 to 65? Um, <clears throat> I don't have that number. I know about 3,100 of the total age 3,100 people are between 60 to 65. So I think it's um, of the 11,000, where is it, 20? Yeah, of, number, of the, the 11,000, okay, yeah. 200, 3,000 of them. So it's a decent sized amount. I can say that um, most people start utilizing our programs and services more um, in their later 60s, but we have lots of people that come that are 60 on the dot. So there would absolutely be people that we would have to explain that this is something that is mm -hmm. for 65 and up. Yeah. Um, and for, for the people who are, who are um, coming in the, in the 60 or, or early 60s, do they tend to be people who are uh, taking early social security, social security retirement? Are they still working? And what sense do you have retired versus not? Um, most of the people that are coming for most of our programs have, have stopped working. Um, but we are starting to add on a lot more programs Thursday evenings, later in the day, so that people can come from work. We do have people that work a couple days a week and come the opposite days. Um, but most of the, the crunch time for our programs are people that are no longer um, going to work every day. For okay. sure. So um, I think I, I love this program. I was a yes coming in, and I'm a yes uh, now. Um, so I think I'll support this, too. And I, I like Mr. DeCourcy's motion. I would suggest that uh, maybe we give this a little more thought, maybe do some, some further conversation. Um, I'd be open to uh, a brief item on one of our summer, next summer meetings if we wanted to consider lowering down to 60. Um, and maybe you and I can talk to um, offline just, just a little more consideration to make sure we get that right. So, uh, any further discussion with the board? So, on a motion by Mr. Diggins to approve with the date no later than September 1st and... DeCourcy. The, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. DeCourcy. <laughs> now it's my turn to do it. So, I was going to say, there's something about that end. Thank you. That's know. right. Sorry. And a second by Mrs. Oh. Mahan. So, it's, it's uh, to uh, approve the program with age 65 and starting no later than September 1st. And a two-year pilot. And a two-year pilot and everything else uh, as is, is in the document. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you all. Everybody on the board, I appreciate it. Thank you for the time. And I'll give a moment for people to um, move around. We are going to move on with our agenda. So. If you are planning, if you're planning to leave after this item, please do, and uh, we'll we'll continue on with our business. Five minute break. Yeah. How are you? We are still in business, sir, so we Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, you're welcome to stay. Session. That was exhilarating. Um, and I
I mean that truly. That was that was wonderful. Uh, we now have item three for approval: Arlington Farmers Market banners. Hot seat. Yes. I'm, I'm chair of the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> Substituting for Andy Doan, who's the director of, of Arlington Eats, who's in Iowa on a family vacation. Just introduce yourself for the record. Yeah, Patsy Kramer. Yes. Uh, I'm the on-site manager for the farmer's market. I think, as many of you know, we merged the farmer's market with Arlington Eats this past year. Uh, and the request for the banners is just given that it's a new entity and a new owner, basically, of the farmer's market, a new logo. I wanted to take the opportunity to just spread the word that it's still there, still functioning, still doing a good job. So that's what our request is. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Any comments from the board? Move approval. Second. And they look great. Thank you. Any discussion? The motion of approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You, Come Ms. to Kramer. the market. <laughs> yeah, we look forward to that. Okay, bye. Item four, we have Art in the Park, July 15, 2023 at Whittemore Park. And Chuck Luca from the Dahl Museum. Uh, Mr. Luca, are you here in person or on Zoom? If you're on Zoom, you'd raise your hand. I don't see the presentation. Um, I would uh, entertain any discussion from our. Um, I, I was going to ask you, Mr. Chair, is, is the application blank for everybody? Yeah, I was just going to oh, say that. Yeah. I know. I just didn't know if it was just me. Yeah. Um, can, uh, since this is when is our next meeting? Seventeenth. So, which is after this. Yeah. Um, I would ask the chair or attorney Heim how to handle this, if we should approve it, subject to receiving the actual application, where it's July 15th. But, Mr. Chair, what? Should have heard Mr. Vice Chair. Yeah, no. I would, I'm sorry, I don't want to step into your request for clarification. I would just say I would be comfortable moving approval mm -hmm. and shifting it to the chair to use his discretion to make sure everything's done safely and appropriately for the for the area. Attorney Hyman, would you be comfortable with that? I think, uh, I guess, I think the appropriate motion would be along those lines, would be, you know, move that uh, the application uh, being understood to be X is approved subject to conditions appropriately set forth by the chair and town departments. Is that your motion? Yes. <laughs> Sound better than mine. I guess I'll, I'll second it. I thought that was my motion. Then. Can we approve this subject to getting the particular? So I'll second Mr. Hart's motion. No, no, no. I got to be more clear. Yeah. Um, all right. Discussion for the board? Just make sure they look good. Sir? Just make sure they look good. Yes. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Okay, so on a motion from Mrs. Mahan, a second by Mr. Hurd. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Mara, we can work together on uh, on uh, getting the final, um, fixing that technical glitch. Now we move to our consent agenda. Items five through nine, minutes of the meeting, June 5th, 2023. Banners for the Arlington International Film Festival, 4th of July banners. Outdoor restaurant and retail permit application at Fusion Taste, and this is just a reapplication of a previously approved uh, application of the prior year. And then we have reappointments, terms to expire June 30th, 2026. To the, uh, to the uh, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, we have Christine Noah. To the Conservation Commission, we have Mike Gildesgame and Susan Chapnick. CPA Committee, we have a Clarissa Rowe and Alexander Franzosa. The Human Resource Board, Cynthia Gallagher. The Redevelopment Board, Rachel Zimbury. Envision Arlington Standing Committee, Julie Brazil. We further have on the consent agenda have uh, items, request for contractor and drain layer licenses for Atlantic Masonry and Tile, Champion Environmental Services, Douglas Construction and Supply. And finally, we have an approval for Electrify to receive Electrify Arlington grant funds. Mr. Hurd, was that you? What? Oh, then, oh uh, I, I was, thought, I thought it was <laughs> Mr. Hurt was actually deep in thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll move approval subject to all the conditions there. All right. Mr. 
Vickers? I'll, I'll second. And I'm really excited about the, the electrified Arlington Grant. You know, so it looks great. Yeah. 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 That's it. Any discussion? So for the consent agenda on a motion by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous approval of items 5 through 11 on the agenda via the consent agenda. Next, we have item 12, appointments for the Disability Commission. Uh, and I apologize in advance if I get the pronunciation wrong. Uh, Carrie Sportis. And I believe that, uh, yep, we are, Carrie's coming, there we go, to, uh, on Zoom. Um, and Ms. Mark, can you do anything with the, with the display? I don't know if you have control over that too. Um, there we go. So uh, good evening, and please, uh, please correct my pronunciation of your name and introduce, introduce yourself to the board and uh, tell us a little bit why you're interested in serving on the Disability Commission. And uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. I, I wasn't sure if you called me first. I just joined, so I couldn't hear. Yes, yes, I did. I probably mangled your last name, so please correct me by introducing yourself and saying sure. it properly. Sure. Hi, I'm Carrie Sassportis, um, and I'd like to join the Disability Commission because I really feel strongly that um, I could add a perspective of lived experience of um, living with a disability to the Disability Commission, and I'm interested in advancing um, some of the issues around town systems and policies in relation to um, the ADA transition plan um, that are non-capital expenses. And so I, I really feel like I could um, provide some insight there. Um, and just in general, I wanna um, continue to be civically active in the town. I'm also a commissioner on the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission. Terrific, thank you. I'll now turn to the board. Mr. Dickens. I'll make a motion to approve our appointment and, and as uh, the liaison to the Rainbow Commission. You know, I have worked with Carrie and she's great. You know, so I'm sure she'll do uh, great work with the Disability Commission. Terrific. Any other questions? Second. Second it, Mr. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, and I think while we're here, we'll take our, well, let's go ahead and take our vote and then we'll, we'll speak with, uh, with Ms. Kagan Tauber. Um, but I wanna say thank you for willing, being willing to serve. Thank you for your service in the Rainbow Commission and uh, signing up for more work is the sign of real dedication, but we appreciate your love for the community. And uh, we're very uh, lucky to have you serving on the Disability Commission. So on a motion to approve by Mr. Diggins, a seconded by Mrs. Mahan, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous, welcome. Now let's turn to Janice Kagan Tuber. Uh, was appointed on, on June the 5th uh, because I vouched for you and I said how wonderful you were to work with in our work together over many months on the Remote Participation Task Force. And I specifically spoke, Janice, for how um, well you represented the disability <coughs> community's needs and perspectives as we considered that really important topic. So tonight we asked you just to come back. I know you couldn't make the last meeting, but we you know, asked you to come back and just say hello and introduce yourself and um, say a few words about your, how you plan to serve on the Disability Commission. Thank you. Um, it's a little difficult to hear you, Eric, as well as hmm. some of the other uh, people. Mr. Diggins, very difficult to hear you too. All right. um, you're so far away. Um, my name is Janice Kagan Toiber. Toiber. Uh, not Tuber. Thank you. If you think about Sigmund Freud and how he spelled his name, it's F R E U D. And my last, the last half of my last name is T E U B E R. So try to make that connection. Anyway, I, um, <clears throat> my first foray into uh, working um, for the town was with the uh, remote study committee. And uh, that was quite eye-opening. But before that, I started going to the Disability Commission meetings. I think I started in early 2020. 
um, I had recently retired and I wanted to become more involved in the town. I've lived here since 1981 and knew virtually nothing about how the town functioned. So I wanted to get involved and given my background as a, a former teacher of deafblind children, an Amer a certified American Sign Language interpreter, um, a, an evaluator of uh, American Sign Language interpreters, I thought the Disability Commission would be the best fit for me. And I have enjoyed working with the members of the commission uh, since I started attending and am very pleased and grateful that you all have um, proved my membership. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to get to know you a little bit and give the public uh, a chance to know how great, how lucky they are to have you serving on the Disability Commission. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Thank you, Ms. Kagan Teuber. Thank you very much. Have a good and, evening. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your meeting. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. That takes us to item 13, the Clean Energy Future Committee appointments. That would be Amy Graber. Let's see if Amy is present on Zoom. Yes. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. Take a couple minutes to introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your interest in serving. Hi, I am, um, excuse me, <coughs> I am Amy Graber. Um, I am hoping to be part of the Clean Energy Futures Committee for the town of Arlington. Um, I am passionate about sustainability and I previously worked for a mass save contractor in Massachusetts in the marketing department. So I hope to also bring those skills to the committee. Um, I am very passionate about outreach and would like to be part of that outreach for the committee in the community that I am now living in and also advocate for electrification within the town of Arlington and transportation. Thank you. I will say as a, as a select board's representative member to that committee, I think you'll fit right in with those passions and interests. Uh, entertain any discussion or motions from the board. Mr. Diggins. I'll make a motion to approve her appointment. And I have to say what captured me was the fact that you found out about the commission. I'll turn on my camera so I can talk to you. I found out about the commission by roaming through the town's website. It, uh, so I did. <laughs> very cool. Thank you. Second. Second from Mr. Hurd. Any further discussion? Well, I think you'll, you'll be terrific. With it. And it's, it's delightful to have uh, somebody new, as Mr. Diggins said, who just looked for opportunities to serve. And that is what makes Arlington such a wonderful community is that people are willing to step up and do the work. And I look forward to seeing you on those Friday morning meetings. <laughs> on a motion uh, mm -hmm. by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say, and this is a motion for appointment. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. That takes us to item 14, licenses and per, and under licenses and permits. We have for approval a class two license from Arzun Arzumanian, Real Motors Incorporated for Dudley Street Place. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for your patience this evening. <laughs> and, uh, uh, my name is David Arzumanian. Um, I apologize, Arsene Arzumanian is missing today due to an emergency, personal emergency. Today I'm here to receive um, your permission for our new business name for, for Dudley Street Place. Uh, we're planning to do the same business as before, selling used cars. Um, I used to work with Edward there from the very beginning. And today I'm just looking to receive your permission for the new business name. Mrs. Mahan. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a tickle. I'd like to move approval subject to all uh, conditions uh, contained herein, which I know you're aware of those just from the building department, but there are no objections from any of the departments, so. Second. Any further discussion? 
On a motion of approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Is unanimous. Thank you so much. Good luck with your business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for your patience tonight. That brings us to item 15 for approval. Common vigiler license for Tate Bakery and Cafe. We have Christopher Hanau. Uh, might be... It's Bob Inessi. Oh, and, oh uh, Mr. Inessi, I think it might be the... Mr. Robert Inessi is on Zoom. Is, uh, my vice chair suggesting maybe representing the applicant. So I can promote him to panelists so he can... Uh, Zoom not responding for you either, Ms. Marr. So I've, prom I've asked to promote. I'm not sure if he has to accept it. Okay. There we go. Yeah, there we go. He says declined <laughs> to be promoted as a panelist. Probably hit the wrong button. Maybe um, I'll try again. Yeah. And if it, so if anybody on Zoom is here to speak to this, to the Tate license, uh, if you'd raise your hand Zoom. Hand okay, we have Mr. Boyle. Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. We'll try this one. Still working out the kinks in this whole hybrid thing. I should be able to, there we go, unmute. Good evening, sir. Hey, good evening, everybody. So are you, you here to speak to the uh, Tate uh, license application? I am. We're having trouble getting Bob into the meeting. Yeah, let's try it. So, you, so Mr. Nessie is, is on your team as well? He is. Yeah, he's representing Tate. So no matter. I can speak to it if we can't get him in. All right. Yeah, so, uh, so Ms. Mar, if you could try, try again to uh, promote, promote Bob to... Uh, to panelists. And did, um, Mr. Boyle, do you have anybody else on your team that we should be bringing in? Uh, Christian Hanau should be in the uh, room as well. He's there. He's the applicant. He's the, uh, the okay. operator manager of the cafe. All right. So uh, let's see if we can bring in um, Mr. Hanau as well. Yep. There we go. Seeing that uh, Mr. Nessie is declining. So um, do you have a do you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Tate Baker and Cafe, um, we are a uh, restaurant brand. We have been on, under construction at 645 Mass Avenue, uh, converting the former restaurant there, uh, not sure if it shows, to uh, Tate Bakery and Cafe. Um, Tate is a breakfast, lunch, and dinner establishment. Um, we operate seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, no alcohol. We... Um, we have 111 seats inside of uh, the restaurant, and uh, we hope to be approved for an additional seven, you know, on a parallel path, not subject to this matter here, but uh, for a patio. And we're about three weeks out from uh, when we hope to achieve certificate of occupancy, another two weeks for training, and we hope to open the establishment on August 2nd. And did you want anybody else from your team to make remarks before the board has uh, questions and comments? I don't think so. We can take your questions. Okay. I will turn to the board for discussion, questions, or motions. Mr. Turner. I'll move approval. I think there's a lot of people in town that are very excited about this. Uh, Tate certainly has a, a good name in the Boston area, and so we'll, uh, you, you're joining a long list of many very successful and well-loved coffee shops in Arlington, but I uh, spent a lot of time in Arlington Center, so I'll find my way down down to Tate as soon as it opens. I think there's a tartine with your name on it, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, there was a modern family where you said, I'm not putting that in my mouth, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more of a bacon and egg and cheese guy. Well, they're B A L T. It's not you can't. You, I'm sure if she said no avocado, you would get a B L T. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'll happily second that, and I'm glad it remained the restaurant. You know, so yes, yeah, yeah I am too. Any further discussion or questions for the applicants? Yeah, we we are delighted that this is happening, and as Mr. Diggins said, I'm glad that that we are able to reclaim that, retain that space as a restaurant, and um, you know that's something that I, I think the demand for coffee shops and, and gathering places like that is, is far from being met in Arlington, so we really welcome this and wish you the best of success.
So on a motion for approval subject to conditions by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. We look forward to the opening. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you for thank you for a while, Thank you. So next we have uh, item 16 uh, for approval and change of ownership interest for an all alcohol package store uh, for San Cropa LLC 64 Summer Street. Is anyone here in the room or perhaps on Zoom? If you're here, we have somebody in Zoom coming in. Thomas Trax should be able to unmute yourself and turn your camera on if you can. Excuse me. Anybody else is here for that item? There we go. Good evening, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, yes, Attorney Tom Truax here in Salem, Massachusetts, on behalf of the uh, licensee and Krupa LLC. And I believe with me virtually is Alex Rodriguez. He's the uh, proposed new member of the LLC. Um, before you is a petition for a change of the membership interest. Right now, there are two members in the LLC and they have proposed to sell and convey to Mr. Rodriguez, each of them a 5% interest in the LLC. So Mr. Rodriguez would end up as a 10% owner. Um, all the uh, financials, the purchase and sale agreement between the parties have been included in our submittal. As for Mr. Rodriguez, he's been an employee there for I believe almost 11 years. Um, not only this ownership, but the prior owners, owners as well. Um, he works there full time. And basically this, this is a reward for his years of service from the current ownership. So um, I think it's a great thing. He, he's excited as heck. And uh, besides being just a, 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 a working there full time, he will now have a, a, a stake in the corporation, a stake in the business. So. Uh, we're just asking the uh, the board to approve this change of uh, ownership interest. Thank you, sir. We'll turn to the board, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I would I would like to uh, move approval, and I just would like to say that um, uh, previous uh, to the this ownership uh, conglomeration thereof, um, we did have some issues um, at this particular establishment on Summer Street, um, and the. LLC and uh, the individuals contained, contained there and came in. <clears throat> and I'm happy to say we haven't heard anything since, um, which tells me that they took this board's concerns very seriously regarding uh, the previous ownership and LLC's um, violations. And I definitely was pleased that uh, Mr. Rodriguez um, is part of the business and, and knows the day-to-day -day routine. I don't know, it's up to him if he, there's anything he wants to say or if he just wants to um, let us do all the talking. I'll leave that to him if he raises his hand, he wants to say anything, but I'll be happy to move approval. Second. All right. Any further discussion? So we have a motion of approval from Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous approval. Congratulations, Mr. Rodriguez, and best of luck to you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we now turn to item 17 for approval an all alcohol package store, city wine, spirits, and smoke shop from Nikont 232 Incorporated. Uh, we have delegation, including Ashika Patel, owner manager, and I see they were present. Feel free to pull up another chair, and then um, as you speak, you can swap around the microphone and try to move the microphone a little bit just for the cable audience. So, and then we have updated packets in front of us. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Andrew Upton for the applicant. With me is Yashika Patel, co-owner and proposed manager of record, and her husband, Nilesh Patel. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, please proceed. If you are ready, I would uh, briefly like to talk about the character and fitness of the applicant to hold the license. Uh, the character and fitness of this applicant, we believe, is strong. Uh, Yashika is approved by the uh, town of Tewksbury to hold the liquor license. Um, uh, Nilesh is not a partner in this business, but he has recently been approved uh, by the city of Boston and the ABCC to hold the liquor license. 
uh, and they work closely together on the operations and the issues. Um, this is a well-capitalized enterprise. Uh, Yashika has uh, quite a bit of experience in uh, age-restricted products and ID checking. Uh, they are Cambridge residents, so they are quite nearby, and she will be uh, taking charge of this store uh, on a full-time basis, should it be approved. Um, it's a family business. The uh, Patels are using their own personal funds, and the balance is a loan from the uh, brother, brother and brother-in-law of the Patels. So it is a closely held family business, which will be run by the Patels, uh, staffed by the Patels. Obviously, there will be other staff members as well. Um, uh, as, as I'm sure you're looking at, uh, Mr. Heim, Attorney Heim has uh, given a list of considerations for the board, so I thought I would just run through those, um, and we're certainly glad to answer any questions along the way or after, sure. uh, but just to give a brief overview. Um, the views of the inhabitants of the town, obviously important in a hearing like this. We have uh, 48 letters of support we have submitted in our packet. Uh, and we, as of today, we have two more which include uh, the owner of the Novita Salon and the Venice Italian Kitchen, which, as you probably know, are the two abutting uh, businesses on the same block. Uh, so I suggest to you that uh, the interest of the inhabitants is uh, very positive for this proposal. Uh, the Patels and some of their associates actually walked up and down the block talking to people to solicit this support, explaining the concept, explaining what they were doing, how they were doing it, what their pr proposal was, and uh, a surprisingly large group of people uh, were willing to sign and submit letters and support. On top of that, the two abutting businesses obviously do not see it as a detriment to their operation since they are also in favor. Um, during our outreach to the community, uh, and our discussions with the Board of Health, uh, we came to the conclusion, based on the input from people, that uh, tobacco products at this location uh, were not what the community wanted. Um, we understand how the rules and regulations work, um, and we have reached out to the people, and we have listened to them, and uh, I'm here to tell you that we are proposing a liquor store, not a tobacco store. Uh, we have no pending applications for any tobacco licenses and no plans to apply for them. Uh, further along that, uh, this will be a, we believe, a unique type of liquor store. This is a high-end wine and spirits and beer store. We will not sell any single service uh, single serving bottles, formerly known as nips. Uh, we will not sell any malt liquor. We will not sell any cakes. Um, we will not have neon beer signs in the window. We will not have posters advertising 36 uh, packs of Bud Light and things like that. It will be uh, tasteful, visible, transparent, well-designed, uh, and not saturated in the kind of advertising you see in some other places. Uh, we will also have uh, no lottery. So we're looking, we're looking at a, a wine experience, craft beer, artisanal spirits, higher end store, which we believe will be uh, a big plus to the neighborhood and also unique for the neighborhood. Um, so just running down the list from Attorney Heim, uh, traffic considerations. Obviously important as you drive up and down Mass Ave, all the retail stores, traffic is, uh, traffic and parking are a challenge, yet uh, we believe that this would be an appropriate location for the liquor store. Uh, we're essentially have opposite hours of the post office, which does its majority business nine to five, uh, where we are more likely to do business in the four to seven range. Uh, the post office does the majority of its business on Saturdays in the morning. We would do the majority of our business on Saturdays in the afternoon. 
So we think that would be a favorable contrast. Um, as you may know, this location has been a retail store for a generation at least. Uh, it was a dry cleaner up until two years ago. For several years before that, it was a grocery store. Um, noise concerns, we do not expect uh, noise to be generated from a retail store any more than it would any other retail store. Uh, the size of the establishment is quite manageable. Um, the type of establishment is obviously a package store. The reputation of the applicant is very solid. As I said, they've been approved by two towns and the ABCC to hold a liquor license, so I think their credentials speak for themselves. Um, the total number of licenses in the community, as you know, this is uh, an open license under the quota, so population-wise, there is a need for one more license. Um, the views and the inhabitants in the town we have discussed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the level of direct involvement of the owners and stockholders uh, is clear, as I've discussed. Uh, the size of store, traffic and noise, seems like we've covered that. Uh, the variety of product, uh, we are, again, not going to have nips, not going to have malt liquor, not going to have kegs. We are focused on good wines, for which there will be wine tasting and wine pairing uh, events and activities. Um, the quality of the training program, this is described in our brochure, uh, but in their other stores and also uh, in their other businesses. Uh, tips training, ID scanner, uh, significant amount of cameras that uh, record the activities and are able to be shared with the police. Um, so very, very strong compliance program and also a desire to work with local businesses and the police uh, and any community outreach people to uh, further dissuade uh, young people from uh, trying to buy liquor. But a very strong compliance program is already in place. Uh, as I said, uh, we've received great input from the abutters and from the general public. Um, and that is basically our overview. And before I uh, go on too long, we're glad to answer any questions. Thank you for that. I will turn to the board for discussion. <coughs> Oh, Mrs. Mahan, sorry, I didn't see you. <clears throat> Mrs. Mahan. Hi, sorry, I was, I was going through the application. I usually print everything out because I'm still a paper person, but I didn't do that tonight, so that's fine. Um, now, um, I understand, I believe, from the application and, and from your attorney that Ms. Patel will be, who will be on site the majority of the time? I will. Yeah. You will. And um, I know your attorney, it, you said attorney, correct? I call it. Your attorney uh, represented that you know you have been approved um, elsewhere. How are, how are you going to split your time between Tewksbury and I forget what the other community was? Or are you not? Are you going to be Arlington based? Arlington yeah. yeah, I'll be at Arlington um, only and Tewksbury will be managed by employees and management. Okay. And, um, because she is a uh, Cambridge resident, so oh. she'll be coming from fairly close by. Okay. And then um, I, I know your attorney referenced the TIPS program and the, and the ID scanner. Mm -hmm. um, it may be in here, and I apologize. I just didn't see it. But um, do you have an, will you have an employee handbook as what yes. A, employee handbook, and B, um, how will you oversee, administrate to make sure everybody is TIPS trained as well as uh, trained on the ID machine as well as th that machine is fully functioning appropriately. Yeah, um, so I am already just trained uh, and the ID scanner, uh, we will make sure we work with the company of whatever ID scanner we, cho we choose to work with with this location and uh, train whoever will be working with me um, and make sure that they know how to use the machine. And both of those will be mandatory before the store opens. And again, it may be, um, I, I do have 
what you all provided us, and it may be in here, um, and if it is, I apologize. I just didn't see it, but if it's not, in terms of, um, and if you don't have the answer tonight, that's okay, but um, what uh, case point scenario that you use the uh, ID machine and realize that the ID that's been submitted uh, is not valid and is uh, forged in some way or other. Do you have a policy what your next step is on that? Meaning, do you return it? Do you retain it? If you retain it, are there any steps after that? Yes, um, we have to, according to what I learned in TIP certification and just my experience with our 21 plus um, smoke shops that I've managed for a couple of years, uh, we just need to be able to handle the customer in a proper manner so that we don't aggravate the situation or anything like that, but we should just deny service to them. Okay, and then um, where you are focusing on um, and I won't go into that we had here last week an Arlington brewery that's just getting started, so not in any stores or anything yet. And I have no interest in, in the, the brewery company, um, but I, knew, I know that some of the other establishments do have uh, wine tastings or something around that. Is that something you've given thought to? It's okay if you haven't, but if it's something you've given thought to, I'd like to hear um, how you envision that possibly happening. And I'm not saying that's something you have to do. Yes. Um, so if we do consider doing wine tastings, uh, we are going to source our wines from uh, local t uh, towns and neighborhoods in the Northeast. And they do offer um, their reps to come out and do tastings and things like that. So that's something we would consider. We would, we would be just be willing to work with the companies on that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a few questions. Just procedurally, um, when the application was initially submitted, um, there was a, a building plan that was submitted with the application, and at that point, I believe that you were planning on opening both the um, alcohol and, and a smoke shop. And, and I know that there was something that was delivered to the board on Friday, but I don't think there was any indication that you sought to amend the application. I think that the package may have been dropped off at the board. And just, um, I just wanted to ask you, um, it, it, it seems to me that we have a situation here where we have an application. Clearly the intent at that time was to, to have the smoke shop. If I look at your articles of organization, you were incorporated for the purpose to operate a retail liquor store and a smoke shop. I think this is the only asset of, the, of, of that entity. So my question is, um, how we're acting on, on something here. I'm just wondering why the application wasn't amended or the first one withdrawn with a new one put in because clearly based on what you're talking about tonight, it's a different, a different operation. I also want to ask you if you've um, amended your articles of organization to, to remove the smoke shop. I think Andrew okay. can best answer that. Yes. This application is based on the ABC's, ABCC and the town's application for a liquor license. This application doesn't ask, doesn't have anything to do with liquor. Um, as we were making our proposal, initially we considered City Wine, Spirits, and Smoke Shop. During our outreach and our discussions with the Board of Health, we came to understand that that was not desirable for Arlington. So uh, not only does this application not include any request for tobacco, we're here to tell you we are not coming back with any request for tobacco. Okay. And, and we will be not using the word smoke in the title either. Okay. And, and just in terms of what we receive, we ask for a package with the application. One of the things that we ask for in addition to the lease is, is, is a plan. And clearly the plan that at least was on file um, showed a, 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 there's a humidor in the back of the, of the building, for example. And, and so, I, maybe a question to, for Attorney Heim in terms of what's before us, notwithstanding the package that Attorney Upton has with him tonight. What, it, it, it seems to me absent some notification that the application has changed and the application does talk about it doing business as City Wine, Spirits, and Smoke Shop. Um, it, it, it seems like we have one thing in the application, another thing tonight. And, and so I'm just wondering from Attorney Heim, what, in his view, what would be necessary 
for an amendment or a reapplication given what we've we've just learned here in the presentation. Attorney Hyman. So let me just make sure I understand. Is this the same as what's been uploaded to the agenda, if I may ask? The application has it as DBA safety and spirits and smoke shop from the ABCC. I see. So my understanding the application includes some details including the name of the entity. This is more just an informational packet for the board. It doesn't necessarily reflect the plans that are in the application that was submitted to the ABCC. Is that correct? I believe the floor plan is the same. Is the not? Application, application under two, the first section, so license information, the ABCC application online that you fill out and submit to us has your DBA as City Wine Spirits and Smoke Shop. Understood. I think that's the confusion. Was, I'm sorry. If I could just ask, is there are there two separate? Uh, is there not? There's not a floor plan submitted with the application of the ABCC. Yeah. Can you just pull that, please? Sorry, Mr. No, 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 no problem. And that, that I believe was submitted on March 7th, and that's part of our application process. And I believe, well, I know it's different than what what what's in the, the book here tonight. Well, I, well, I guess what I would recommend, and I don't want to speak for the applicants, is some kind of formal amendment so that we're not approving something that is approved by the ABCC is X and we're approving Y. There's a couple of different ways that that can be achieved. Uh, I don't know if the applicant has a specific perspective on that, but from my perspective, I understand your concern, which is that you're being asked to approve a license under the DBA that includes at least some level of detail about the smoke shop. My understanding is the applicants no longer want to pursue that. So, um, you know, depending on what the board wants to do, um, it may be necessary to make some, you know, formal amendment to the application to make sure there's not future confusion. Yes, I, that's I, what I'm just concerned about exactly that. Just the, the the state of what's before us and, and not knowing where we're. Um, going as a board here because I, I, I just do feel that you know, completeness of the record is important and, and it's also important that um, what we have in the, in the office from what was submitted earlier is consistent with what you're asking for tonight. I, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yes, of course. I think Attorney Heim has, has got it exactly right. It's uh, well within the board's power should you choose to approve this application to make a motion to approve it with the DBA that does not say smoke and with uh, a floor plan that does not include humidors. I mean, all that could be done right here and now if you so desire. So, I, I, I do agree that the board is within its power to set certain conditions, but I also understand Mr. Corsi's point, which is that I think the concern of the board is they don't want to be voting on what the formal application is versus the understanding of what it would likely be given that it's already been submitted to the ABCC, right? No, it is, it's, it's well within the power of the board to make a motion to approve any variation that you want. And the way the process works is the city is the first approver and whatever you approve goes we're, directly to- We're a town, we're a town. Pardon me. No, that, that means a lot. If you, no, no, if I, you do business like that, it's going to hurt. <laughs> I apologize. Um, the, t the, t the local licensing authority is the first approver, and what the town approves goes to the ABCC. The ABCC has not yet received anything and will not consider anything unless it comes through this board with modifications by this board. Sure. I, I guess I just want to clarify something, though. Are you proposing to formally amend your application, or are you saying that the board is going to set the condition that amends what you can and cannot do? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, that, that's fine. This is, this is constructive, so I'm, I'm happy to permit this. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, if it's the pleasure of the board to approve, I'm happy to do it either way. Okay. Yeah, that, that's helpful. I think it's a helpful clarification. Anything further on that, on that point, Mr. Yeah, I, well, I, I think what's helpful for, just speaking for myself, is, is you, you, you've made a decision in, you know, based on feedback, and, and, and that's certainly, I, I, and I, I think, given your discussions with the health department, that um, 
a smoke shop and a, and a, a package store can't, can't operate in Arlington, right? And um, so it's not us telling you that. I, it, it seems to me that having that change, um, the amendment should come from the applicant, not from the board in terms of what the, what the conditions are. And, 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 and I'm just concerned because when this came to us, and Ms. Meyer, I understand this was, this was delivered to the board office on Friday, Thursday. On Thursday, but no cover letter, nothing saying that this is this is what it is. I mean, again, just for what's before us and whatever conditions, if, if you know, whether it's neighbors that are challenging what happens, if it's an affirmative vote, or, or I, I don't know where we're going to go as a board, but it seems like the state of the application should reflect what you're asking for us to do. You, this is the first time you're before us. You've made some changes to what you've done, and then what I'm hearing is, well, you can condition it on, on, on some things. I'd, I'd rather have you say affirmatively, this is, this is what we're asking the board to approve now uh, through, through the application. And, and again, um, it, it, it just seems like that's a clearer way to develop a record of what we've done and what you've asked for. Right. Well, I, I, I will say right now, we're asking you to approve the name City Wine and Spirits. <laughs> can, I, can I just? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, oh, wait, oh, if wait, you want to say something. Else, someone else wants to call. I, I, I just want to say, and you know how they say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I'm just, my day job is court reporter. So I'm, I'm really big on, on process and housekeeping, as well as, um, and I'm not saying other cities and towns don't take alcohol package store licenses very seriously, but the board does, and we try to treat everybody as the senior member on the board, which I never thought I'd say that, the oldest, longest member or whatever. Um, we've done everything the same way all the time. And what I'm fearful of is uh, if I'm prepared to vote on, if I was prepared to vote on the application that's before us tonight, it would, it would not be successful from Board of Health and other uh, town departments. I understand you and your attorney have met with them and have changed and modified that. For the board to vote something, to not have something actually before us from the application and it's something that we have to oversee, ad administer, um, I don't think we should start doing for package stores that sort of process. I think um, th that's where I would not be comfortable with the suggestion of it could be approved with me understanding a certain thing that's, that's, that that's not what's for me. So I'll stop there. Uh, Mr. Duclosi, I think Yeah, no, I, 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 and as, as I think this through, and again, um, I, I think it, it, it makes sense for Attorney Upton you know, perhaps to contact Attorney Heim in, in terms of just developing exactly what you're looking for. And I, I I'm going to make a motion to table this or, or uh, um, continue the hearing, rather, um, so that we can get that clarification so it's absolutely clear, lined up what's in the application, what you're looking for, um, because you know, while you have cited a number of letters of support, we've also gotten a number of letters from neighbors um, that have opposed this. And, some of it is because of the smoke shop aspect, and some of it is for other things. So it, it's, it, this isn't one of those applications that is before us where everybody who has been contacted supports it um, and, and that there's a, 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 a somewhat unique procedural history on this as, as, as well, where I think it's important um, that we're all on, on the same page, at least what you're presenting to us. And, and so, um, I'm, I'm just concerned about lining that up, and I'd rather not do it through conditions. I'd rather do it through an amendment to the application so that we all know what we're looking at and, and we're all on the same page. Notwithstanding what you told us tonight, this is, this is what, what you'll be doing. So, Mr. Gorsuch, in your motion to table, do you or, or continue? To continue. Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, Mr. Chairman, if, if I may. Just, just a moment, please. Um, would the continuation be to a specific date? What, what parameters do, would you, in your motion, just so I can get this clear in the motion, then we'll go to more discussion. Yeah, well, I, I, I think, and again, we may hear from Attorney Upton in terms of some time issues, but I mean, I, I, I think it's, we don't have another scheduled meeting until July. If there's some other issues that can be done, I think maybe it's at the call of the chair in terms of 
between now and then um, to come back. But I think I think there are points that need to be clarified. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Attorney Upton. Yeah. The way I see it at this point is, if we were to amend and change the application, the only thing we would do is white out the word smoke under the DBA. To me, that seems a little bit formal over substance. There is no tobacco application or smoke shop application in front of you. That's a separate board and a separate application, and that's not something you're considering at this time. If you vote yes, you do not grant tobacco. If we say on the record we will not apply for tobacco, we would hope you would take us at our word. But we're more than willing to come back and engage in more discussion but literally what you're asking us to do right now is white out five letters from the cover sheet of a 40-page application. And it, I'd like to hear more as to whether that's you know, completely necessary. Yeah, well, no, I'd like to give you a little bit more. Um, we received this on Friday. Okay, every member in this hearing had been continued from a few weeks ago um, be, because of it, in whatever circumstance we got a request, can you continue the meeting until tonight? Um, and, and so for us as a board preparing for a hearing based on the state of the record, what was filed here a couple months ago, and then I saw this for the first time today. Um, it was posted over the weekend, okay, and I inquired of Ms. Marr, okay, where did this come from? Um, did you receive a cover letter from Attorney Upton explaining what, what this is? And the answer was no. So we're sitting up here as a board, and we have one set of facts that we've all been working off. We prepared on June 5th for a certain set of facts. I'm pointing out there wasn't a tobacco license on June 5th, but there was a different intention in terms of what you want to do. Now we have this. I think it behooves the applicant to make the change to come back before us in terms of what exactly you're looking for and, and to say we're just going to white out a few things, I, I'd put it to you. If that's all you had to do, why didn't you change the application so that we could consider it? Because you can consider it. It's, it's, it's well within your power to do so administratively. Right. But no explanation, nothing. This, this, this is what was dropped off, okay? So none of us, and my colleagues can talk about what they had. We didn't know what you're proposing or that, that you were no longer doing a smoke shot based on what came in. And, and so well, I, I think for, for the state of the record um, and, and for what happened, I think it should be cleaned up based on what's happened. I've never had an application for an alcohol license come in where things have changed in terms of what's going to be there before the board, okay, on the night of the hearing without an explanation. And, and I, I, I think we should have a clean application or an amended, and maybe there's something else that needs to be changed because you're talking about five letters. Well, the, the, the lead, as I said, the, the document that um, was submitted that, that had the plan of the building is different than the, what's in here. So even a cover letter from you, this is now what's different from what we submitted, from what we're looking for. I stole the question about your articles of organization because you still organize to operate a smoke shop. I, I, I think a little additional time to clean that up for our consideration, um, I, I, I don't see where the harm would be to do that just so we're all, we all have the same information before us. And I'm, I'm seeing your client nod his head, but I, I, I no, we're, we're, we're more than willing to do that. But can, can I refer you to page one of this document? And, you know, it is traditional for, for applicants to come before the board with materials amplifying, discussing, and illustrating the application. And it's traditional for you to ask questions and for us to answer. That's all this is. This doesn't change the application one bit. And there's an introductory cover letter on page one. It, no change to the application. And again, this is, this is outside, and, and Attorney Heim, um, I, I'm going to go there because, I mean, we, we have a change in application. Well, you have an appeal before the ABCC on another application um, that you submitted, and I believe that's still pending. So what, what's before the ABCC? Is it this, or is it what you submitted that you didn't get a hearing on earlier? 
Mr. Chairman, can I ask for a brief recess? Sure. The, the meeting will be in recess. All right, we are back in session. Give the uh, technology a moment to catch up with us. Good, Ms. Mark? Yes. Okay, we're back. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I feel that I'm fortunate to be heard by the board. I feel like the board is especially fortunate uh, to have board counsel as skilled and diplomatic as they do. And based on those comments, I would suggest that uh, we accede to your request to come back at a future date to amend uh, whatever amendments are necessary. And I would also suggest that if it pleases the board, uh, we take a few more minutes to answer any other questions or issues as long as we're here on the application. Thank you. I, I appreciate the spirit of that. I think that's an appropriate use of time. Um, Mr. Gorsi, do you have anything further? I, I, I don't. Thank you for those comments and working with, with Attorney Heim and, and uh, taking the time to, to think that over. And, and uh, I don't have any further questions right now. Mr. Heim. Thank you. I would say that I certainly look forward to the business. I think it is, I have no problem with the location. Um, having an accurate floor plan for us is important, even if it's a small change. Arlington has a pretty short history with liquor stores. So in every time we've ever looked at a liquor store, even we've made, asked for very small changes to where a cooler is. And that's why I think it's very important for us to see exactly what's being proposed in front of us. Um, just a comment that not for the next meeting, but in perpetuity, we, I certainly trust the word that's put in front of me. We have heard before with other applicants, not you, that they weren't going to put, you know, advertisements and Marlboro ads and, you know, whatever else in the windows. So that is also important to this board. And since the inception of the liquor stores, we've always had the sign regulations. There are a lot of sign regulations too. So just going forward, and I think maybe we'll discuss this at the next time around as well, that's something, appearance from the street is something that is important to this board and the town residents. And we've had successes and non-successes with businesses relative to that. Um, that I just asked, I was looking at your list, are you going to sell Prime? Sorry? Are you going to sell Prime? If it's available. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are very, every time, my eight-year-old is often asking me to go to the liquor store down the street. So it's, it's a little uncomfortable for me, but <laughs> Prime is taking over the world, it seems like. It is. But uh, just to lighten them. So one what? comment uh, with the floor plan, we'll make those adjustments 100%, but that will, again, still has to go to the building department. Yep, so anything that we submit has to go through the building department approval and then the process of occupancy. Um, and in terms of just a little bit of experience, my wife and I have been working hand to hand to open numerous retail stores for the last 20 years. I've only operated retail stores and she's grown up. We've been together 15 years and all she's done is retail. She's, you know, she went to college, got a degree, but we're in the retail business. So we understand uh, the repercussions of adult use retail establishments. Um, and that's primary focus. Majority of our establishments are in Boston, all adult use retail stores. And uh, in terms of the product and category, we, we follow, we have zero violations in any establishments that we own, and the majority of them were owned over a decade. Um, the goal is to continue that. Yeah. So. And just, just following on on that, one, one thing we don't sell is uh, candy, gum, mints, stuff at the counter that would appeal to the under-21 crowd. Yeah. And we certainly understand the inspection process. It just, I don't think we've ever approved any business without an accurate form. No, no, and that's just 100%. That, and that we look for. So support. I look forward to continuing this and certainly having a productive discussion at the next meeting that this comes up. So I'll second Mr. DeCourse's motion. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, this is a, a comment and then, and then a couple of uh, quick questions. You, know, you do know that the name of this is just going to confuse everyone as to whether Arlington 
like it's a city or a town. I mean, so like, so so. I mean, I'd say it humorously, you know. Right? But hey, who knows? Maybe maybe you're presaging something, you know. Uh, but but uh, that aside, you know. Uh, so are you anticipating that most of the customers are going to walk uh, to the store? Sorry, I couldn't hear. You. I'm sorry. Are you anticipating that most of the customers are going to walk to the store? Um, we are anticipating most of the pedestrians. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know. So so then. Um, it, it, we have some things working that we're working through in town. I mean, um, so, so um, if the parking in front went away and, um, or was reduced, you know, would that be an issue for you? No, like I said, we're anticipating mostly pedestrians, so okay. it should be fine. All right, all right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple questions as well. Um, I'd like to inquire, you, know, you referenced uh, public, public opinion, and you know, the board received, uh, I think from recollection, five or six uh, individualized, very detailed personal letters from the community that, that had concerns about um, the location vis-a-vis uh, -vis density and, and that there you know, other other package stores within a radius. So I noted with interest uh, the, the significant number of uh, signed, uh, mostly hand-signed, uh, letters, and I and also noticed it was a form letter, so they're all the same. Um, and I wonder if you could, uh, just for our understanding of the process and the quality of the of that those expressions of support, if you could detail for me how you went about um, soliciting th that support, and you know, kind of explain why they're all the same words. Um, yes, some of the people that we work with uh, drafted these letters, and they walked up and down the block and approximately the 200s of Mass Ave, talking to people who were residents, uh, visitors, or shoppers, and said, hey, we're proposing this. What do you think? Would it be a good idea? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Um, some said they liked it. Some said they didn't like it so much. Some said they liked it a lot. And the people that liked it a lot, we asked them to sign a letter. So we had them there, and they signed it much like you did, would with a petition. I mean, some people said, I really like this concept, but I don't want to give you my phone number. Or I don't want to say, you know, I don't like to write. I'm in a hurry. i got to go through. But uh, the response was overwhelmingly positive. Thank you. And uh, interest, I no noted that, you know, the, report, uh, the reports from Special Services, just noting that would the board grant this license, you know, that that's really just your first step and that you would, uh, this property, because it's, it's – um, not in allow use under the R6 residential zoning would require um, variance from the ZBA and then various combinations of conditions would require a further environmental design review approval by the AR for the redevelopment board. If you could comment on, on, you know, I'm assuming you feel that you have a viable path forward, you know, that that's a lot of hurdles. Um, but, and I understand that we would, you know, we would make our decision without respect to that and leave, leave it to those bodies to, to make those determinations. That withstanding, I think it speaks to uh, how you, I'd be interested to know how you plan to address the reason for those hurdles, that this is not an allowed use in that residential zone, and, um, and, and you know, the, all, the, all the reasons why this would trigger special review and variances and, and, and permits, and, you know, kind of what kind of a case you would expect to make um, to, to achieve success there. Uh, I am the liquor license attorney, not the zoning attorney, however... I will say that uh, based on representations from the landlord and the non-conforming pre-existing use history, um, both the applicant and the landlord feel comfortable that zoning relief would not be a high hurdle. And we're certainly happy to have, should we get approval from this board, I mean, I don't think you even have to condition it. It's contingent on right. all other permits anyway. Right, yeah, no, that, still, that would still have to happen, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that's all my questions. Um, do I need any further discussion on the board? Uh, or any information? I, we don't really have a point of information in these proceedings. Uh, we don't have one in town meeting either. Uh, but, uh, so th I'm not, this is not a public hearing, so I think what we're going to do is continue. Is, uh, if, if the motion is successful, um, we'll do a continuation of that, and then I can contemplate. If you want to con contact me afterwards, we could contemplate um, a public comment at that time. Um, Attorney, have you any comment on that ruling? No, uh, other than to say, I think the, the board can take public comment if it, if it so chooses, um, rather than defray that uh, 
Yeah, I will. I, my vice chair has reminded me, uh, for the purposes of anyone in the Zoom or in room, that I think once we take this vote, this matter will be concluded. However, the next item on the agenda is open forum. And residents can take up to three minutes to talk to, to the board about anything they wish. So that may be a further opportunity for any resident to make a comment on any matter that is before the board. So uh, on a motion to uh, continue to the call of the chair by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you for your time for your efforts. Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Forward to seeing you again. Thank you. to uh, shuffle the deck here. Okay, now we mo move next to open forum. And uh, I will, s this is the opportunity for the public to comment on anything in the meeting. Uh, we don't have any other public hearings. Uh, so when we move to open forum, I'd say if you want to make any comments about any matter, but also uh, including anything that we're going to be taking up, that could include parking. Um, or, or um, either the parking proposals, that this would be the time in the three minutes that, that are granted to make the comments. So um, I, I want to also explain to people who are participating on Zoom that uh, if you want to participate in public forum, in open forum, to please raise your hand. I've got some people in the room, I think, and I've got the people on Zoom, so I will go alternate back and forth. Each person we will give uh, three minutes to speak. And I don't think we'll need this, but I'm going to limit open forum to a period of 30 minutes tonight, um, just because we have a lot of other business we get to. I think that should allow enough time for everybody. Um, so we have a first speaker, um, Mr. Moore. Uh, um, and you need to come to the uh, table there and introduce yourself and Dr. Uh, for the record. Uh, uh, gentlemen, the panel. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, what you been? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, uh, uh, Precinct 18, Piedmont Street. I, um, I'm not sure that the way that open forum and public comments are being handled uh, reflects very well the way we used to do it in the before COVID times. I'm not sure why it is now that we're doing hybrid that we're reverting still to the COVID forced open forum approach. We used to take comments on each item, public comments when hearings were occurred. We seem to have moved back from that, and I understand during COVID why that was necessary. I think now that we're moving back into more normalcy, we should go back to the way we used to do it in that I had a particular question for the applicant as a public, as a member of the public. I think they've probably left me. Um, so I'm going to suggest that when they do come back for their continuance, that you ask them if they're going to be selling lottery tickets. Because that is a little bit of a different business approach than high-end liquors, which they were moving towards. There's issues that move along with that as well as litter and all that kind of thing. So I would ask that. But obviously I was unable to ask that during the time when that was being considered by the board. And I think that's a more sensible approach is to allow that. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you, sir, of course. And thank you for your understanding. Sure. Um, so before, uh, uh, as I promised, I'll now go to, we'll alternate between people who are in remote land and people in the room. I think we have Jennifer Latowski raised, her, uh, raised Jennifer's hand. Um, and then after that, we'll go back to someone in the room. So Ms. Latowski is coming back. We do this just so that everybody feels on equal footing. Good evening, Ms. Latowski. Thank you very much. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Great. So my name is Jennifer Latowski, and I live on Oxford Street in East Arlington, Precinct 3. I'm here to discuss the dangerous traffic conditions that we have on Oxford and Winter Street. These are narrow residential streets that connect Broadway and Mass Avenue in East Arlington. They're the home to the Leslie Ellis School and Crosby Park, which has a playground, a playing field, and the tennis courts. We see a high volume of traffic using these streets to go between Mass Avenue and Broadway, many of which are traveling far too fast for narrow residential streets like this. We see a a high number of cars parking on in the no parking zones on both streets, particularly during the school drop-off and pick-up times, 
blocking driveways, preventing delivery trucks from getting through. We also have a lot of people who walk in the neighborhood and bike, particularly children, as they're going to the Thompson School, the Gibbs School, and to Crosby Park. And this combination has created an increasingly dangerous situation. It's not just theoretical. In March, a child was hit by a car on Oxford Street across from the Leslie Ellis School. She was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. And in the past seven years, there have been at least three collisions on Oxford Street, in one of which the car actually went through the brick wall of the locksmith business right on the corner. So on June 3rd, a group of 20 people met at the Leslie Ellis School to discuss our concerns and possible solutions. We represented local residents, the head of the Leslie Ellis School, other members of the community, and the newly formed Broadway Neighbors Coalition, a group of Arlington residents who want to see improvements all along the Broadway corridor and the neighboring uh, and the surrounding neighborhood. So we've identified three actions that we strongly encourage the town to take. First, promote the development of a traffic management plan to improve the issues during the arrival and dismissal time at the Leslie Ellis School in time for the start of school in September. Second, implement short-term traffic calming measures such as speed display signs or temporary bump outs like those used on Chestnut Street before construction. And three, plan and search for funding sources for long-term traffic calming measures such as speed tables or chicanes, but put those in Oxford and Winter Street as a pilot program to then develop a traffic calming toolkit, not only for these two streets, but for residential streets across Arlington where there's so much need. So these actions align with the goals in the Connect Arlington plan, particularly enhancing safety to and from schools and community facilities, and for developing and implementing a neighborhood traffic calming programs. We've sent these actions to the select board in a letter signed by 36 people. Please act on this before more people are hurt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. We now return to the room, and uh, we have a gentleman who's been waiting very, very patiently. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Introduce yourself uh, and your, where you live for the record. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is William Gallano, Jr. I live on Yorkshire Road in Arlington. Uh, I started out as a young kid here in 1955 with my mom and dad owning a bakery up at the Heights. Uh, I ended up meeting my wife in 61, which I got married in 65, and I've been here in this town. We just celebrated our 58th wedding anniversary. Uh, one of the biggest things I'm having trouble with is, is the traffic for the handicap. Uh, I have now been twice ticketed in Arlington. First time I got ticketed was right in front of the bus stop on Mass Ave. They have a parking spot there that looks like a parking spot, but I was told downstairs the two lines out in the street don't match each other to be a parking spot. Everybody's getting tickets there. And I don't think it's fair to anybody that parks there to get a ticket. So they should, you know, put up the signs. I am an ex-town employee from the town of Lexington. I served 13 years with the town before I got hurt. The thing of it is, is that they have to make better signs. I was on Alton Street. They have a little 8 by 10 sign up on the top of a post stating that it's a loading zone. The, 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 uh, donate, the, uh, Signs for the area should be put up on the wall to show that it is a loading zone. I parked in the handicapped spot right there at the beginning of Alton Street, and there's three parking spaces and then the handicap. The little sign is way down in the end, so you can't see it. And I know Mr. Leonard, I've talked to him before about this. So anyway, uh, just, uh, you know, they should put signs that denominate the parking spots, there's another one up on Mass Ave, right by uh, Mill Street, where the sign is up in the light pole, and it says, don't park to the corner. But there's another parking spot there for somebody else that, you know, is in town and wants to park to go to these stores. And you're eliminating these parking spots, trying not to take and eliminate them, but to gain more legal parking spots so they can park their cars legally. I've already had to pay two parking tickets, and that's not my best thing. And I just, uh, you know, I feel that uh, all the parking should stop being looked at, and all the signs should be posted legally. I worked on the, the signs up in Lexington. I've done a lot of them, parking meters and everything else. And 
it doesn't take much to make a sign to post it legally or put a, post, a sign on the side of the building that says loading zone, 8 to 3 o'clock, you know. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. I mean, there's a lot of areas in town that could be good parking spots for parking cars. There's a lot of places that are handicapped parking spots. I mean, that handicapped spot is in a place where I've never seen the sign. You know, it's a little thing on the top of a pole. We, we've reached your, uh, th three minutes. Um, but thank you for, for those comments. And something I, uh, I didn't, I usually read ahead of time is that for open forum, the board makes a practice of listening only and then we'll consider whether we want to bring things back to the board uh, for the future. But thank well, you, that's, sir, for That's your all I want. I just wanted Good. to notify them and to see that the traffic department would, you know, get the signs out legally. Thank you, sir. And thank you for my time. Of course. All right, do we have anybody else uh, in Zoom who wants to participate in public forum? You can raise your hand in Zoom now. And is anybody else in the room who wants to participate in public forum? Yes. Mr. Fury. Good to see you back there. Mr. Fury, Precinct 2. Yeah. Uh, 58 Moss Street. Please enjoy our new table for the comfort of our guests. Yeah, thanks. It's cool. <laughs> um, I'm a little uh, perplexed. I... So is this is it the only time to speak now or never? I mean, if when the, the hearing is reconvened, uh, reconvened for the package store, will there be an opportunity to speak then? Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney Heim. I think that the chair can afford an opportunity to speak on the record for as part of the hearing. Yes. Yeah, that, that is, uh, I mean, normally for open forum, we don't respond, but I think this is timely. That, okay. that will be my intention, to, to afford a public comment period during that hearing. Uh, after... Uh, so they they'll reconvene and you'll you'll talk to the applicants and and then people the people will be able yeah, to speak. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a public, I'll do a public hearing for community. Right, so comment. then I, I'd rather wait. Sure. So you're yes. not going to count this time against me. I'll stop the clock. <laughs> Was there anything else you want to talk about? No, uh, I'm I'm glad I didn't. The last time I made a presentation in town hall, I got booed, so I, I didn't just now. So that was. Cool. <laughs> I don't think we'll boo you, sir. And Mr. Mr. Diggins and Mr. DeCorsi will be glad to know that I'm not going to stick around for the overnight parkings. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring it on, just bring it. Oh. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Do we have any other participants for open open forum? Open forum? Yeah, please go. It's a new team. Good evening. Good evening. So, state, so this is for open forum. And yes. um, so state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Lisa Cronin. I am the landlord of 232 Mass Ave. So, um, and I was born and bred in Arlington. I'm an Arlington Catholic graduate. Um, and I just, I guess my family's owned this property since the 70s. I took over in 1999 um, during COVID, Rainbow Cleaners, the the owner of Rainbow Cleaners decided to retire after the tiring, trying to get through COVID in a failing business. He tried to sell it. I, you know, I worked with all my tenants to try to help them save their businesses through COVID. Um, I've been working with my three sons. This is one of my sons. Just to clarify, 232 is where the liquor stores are. Oh, I'm sorry. No, thank, no that's, thank a, that's good for the benefit of the public. Thank you. Um, for two years, we've been working tirelessly trying to get that place rented um, to a, a, a reputable business that could come in and, and you know, run a reputable business there. Um, it's been, um, and right now I feel like, um, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's uh, tonight was a little frustrating for us, and I, and I understand that you need to have all your, your T's crossed and your dots, um, your eyes dot. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's <laughs> fine. Um, you know, I, anyways, I, um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to, I guess I just wanted to get up here and at least state, you know, where we're coming from. I'm a single mom. I'm a registered nurse trying to get this place rented, like I said, to a reputable person, um, which I think these people, you know, I've visited their other stores, and I think that they would be a great asset to Arlington as well. So. 
I'll only be a minute. Um, just wanted to emphasize a few points from what you said. Just that COVID was tough. We worked with the other tenants and we were able to make sure that they all stayed in business um, and we're very proud of that. Um, that it has been very tough financially as well. My mom, single mom nurse, we've taken out a lot of loans to get it in a place where we have a tenant who wants to go in there right now. Um, and we've lost rent for over two years from that now that we've been trying to support the rest of our lives with. And then on top of that, a lot of time. So I'm a consultant during the day, but two to three nights a week or on the weekends, I'm coming up doing stuff that the tenant would be doing, like t taking care of the inside of it. Um, shoveling. Shoveling <laughs> anything outside to make sure that it's safe for everyone else there. Um, dealing with potential tenants and we've had a lot of potential tenants and um, we've been working with the I, broker as well I think that we finally found a really good tenant for the town of Arlington so just hope that's taken into consideration when we come before you again um, mm -hmm. hopefully in July thank you thank you thank you for thank, thank you and uh, we have uh, one more raised hand uh, if Susanna Fitcher is here for open forum bring Susanna in for and uh, Susanna, you can unmute yourself. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Susanna Ficarra, and I live next door at 230 Mass Avenue. I'm an owner of a condo there, and I've owned it for 36 years. Um, a number of us really are very upset about this proposal. There are two other liquor stores within half a mile of this particular location. It is a residential area. Our driveway is between our building and 232. It's a very narrow driveway with parking in the back. When the dry cleaner was there, we already had a lot of problems with people that were coming to the dry cleaners that would um, um, block our driveway. Constantly this happened. We had to go to them and tell us. We have signs that say uh, resident parking only, but they're still doing it. The liquor store will be much more invasive in that respect. We also um, are opposed to it because of the hours going to 11 o'clock at night with lights on. Our building is very, very close. Actually, we will see these lights from our units in our building. So we don't approve of that at all. We don't think that we need another liquor store in the area. The traffic situation is very, very bad at that corner with Orvis Street. Uh, in the past, there has been at least one accident with a pedestrian being hit. It's constantly a problem with people trying to, they cut through from Lake Street to come up to Mass Avenue uh, whenever they can, even though there are certain times of the day that are now no longer allowed. So they cut up that way and then they turn left on Mass Avenue to go west towards the center. That causes much more traffic. It's very difficult to see with three lanes of traffic. There have been accidents. We don't want this kind of traffic situation there. And, and you know, because they actually have flags on either side of Mass Avenue at Orvis there for people to cross with to use the flags because it's such a difficult intersection, particularly at night in the dark when people, pedestrians are trying to cross. We feel very strongly that this is an unnecessary business to put into this neighborhood. We don't need it. There is no reason for it to be there. I understand that the landlord would like to rent the space. We would like to see it rented too. We enjoy the neighborhood as a pedestrian friendly neighborhood where people can walk. It's dangerous enough as it is there. We don't need an alcohol um, store to be there when there are two others within such a close space. I also would like to say that the number of letters that were shown by the uh, people that want to do this, they were form letters, they asked people without any information about the real situation. A number of those people who signed that letter are on streets that are, they're certainly not a butters. And in fact, a number of them are two, three miles away. They have nothing to do with our neighborhood. So they don't know what the situation is. It is a very difficult place for us to be. 
We have liked the situation where we live there for all these many years and we'd like it to continue. It's a pedestrian friendly and neighborhood friendly uh, establishment. Thank you. Thank you very much. This concludes our open forum for the evening. Thanks to all who took the time to bring the concerns before the board. Now move to item 18, request for an on-street overnight parking waiver for James Foley. Another very patient individual. <laughs> well, I think I'm a little humbled by everything that came in front of me, actually. So a lot of very interesting proposals. Just to uh, introduce your name and address. My name is James Foley, and I'm the owner of the residence at 1113 Moulton Road. It's been a family home since we had it built in 1907. I was not around at that time. I was born at Sims Hospital at 1962, uh, but I've owned that property uh, for the past probably 20 years. It's been in our family since 1907. I actually live up on Longmeadow Road where parking's not an issue. We actually have a driveway so we can get the cars in off the street. Um, I have my youngest of four daughters living at 11 Moulton Road right now with a roommate, recent graduate, and up until this day when I lived on Moulton Road, never had a parking ticket in my life, but we park in the street. Most of the homes on Moulton Road, as you know, actually have no driveways. And we did have a driveway built over the years. My grandparents did, actually, and it got developed. We have tenants upstairs that have been there over 30 years, and they are elderly. They have two cars in the driveway. My daughter's been parking in the street, and you had mentioned one of the board members to have children. Well, I'm, my daughter's been getting parking tickets um, very, very frequently lately, almost um, every other night or third night or fourth night. Um, and guess who she goes to to help pay for those parking tickets? <laughs> She's a recent grad. And what I was hoping to do, since we've had the house for so long, we've been long-term Arlington residents, but gradual Arlington Catholic, is possibly get a temporary um, overnight parking permit for, say, a year, um, if that is possible, um, without inconveniencing the neighbors. Of course, if there are snowstorms, we'll get the car off the road. We'll do other things, inclement weather, anything like that. I'm just looking for a little bit of reprieve so I don't have to pay all these parking tickets. I did start out by going to the police station, and they did say they understood the concern on Moulton because of the lack of driveways, that sort of thing. They typically don't like to ticket, but apparently had some complaints from some people that didn't have parking, so, and so they did complain at that point. Um, my daughter does park directly in front of our two-family home. Um, she doesn't in block anybody else's driveway. She doesn't interfere with anybody else at all. I'm just hoping for a small reprieve, if at all possible, because as they said earlier in the evening, when you get tickets regularly, it does get expensive. Having four daughters, I'll tell you, can be expensive enough. <laughs> so, anyways, and I was just throwing myself in the mercy of the select board to see if there's anything you could do for me. Thank you, sir. Turn to the board. This, Mr. Hurd. This is a very interesting request. I don't know <laughs> if you've seen our full agenda, but... As of right now, and this might change in about five minutes, um, you, you don't qualify for our current standards for overnight parking. I don't know if we, I don't want to keep you here later if you want to table the request because, I mean, I would just say I don't want to make light of your situation, but as of right now, our policy has always been is there's a driveway at the property that we don't grant overnight parking permits. There's a lot of properties in the same boat as you. There's a lot of two families in Arlington. A lot of them are tandem parking. Um, it's always been if there is parking, we haven't granted those permits because, I mean, you had mentioned having it for one year. Once we, traditionally, when we've granted overnight parking waivers, it's been sort of in perpetuity because the clerk's department handles it beyond us. But we are in our next agenda item, talking about a pilot program oh, to okay. allow overnight parking. So, I mean, again, I don't know if we should table it, if you want to stick around, or I can turn to my po colleagues for additional insight. I think just, just procedurally, um, I'm not sure it, it matters a great deal, because I think if the, if, the, if the application is sort of for permission under our current standards, yep. I think it's pretty clear um, if my colleagues, you know, our colleagues agree with you. Uh, but I think anyone's welcome to stick around for further discussion uh, yeah. on an agenda item. Uh, any other comments or questions from the board? Uh, 
Mr. Corsi. Yeah, and, and it may be longer than a five-minute presentation <laughs> <laughs> on the subsequent item, but I, I, I agree with Mr. Hurd. I mean, I think we may be addressing something that it would apply at least on a short term to your situation, but unfortunately what you're presenting, where things stand, where, where you are on the agenda tonight, it wouldn't meet our standard, but, but maybe just stay tuned. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll wait around for the next presentation to hear that. I'll hear what the select board has to say. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. So, so um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. a motion to deny the application? No action. No action. Yeah. I know deny seems a little, harsh. <laughs> a little harsh to take no action on the application. Second. All right, so we have a, 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 a with the friendliest of intentions, a, vote, a motion of no action by Mr. Hurd, <laughs> a second by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, Thank you very much. I'll wait and listen. <laughs> That's right. Well, well, can, All right. Can, can, I, can I register an abstain on that? We have, okay, so we have an abstain. We have an abstention. No, no, so no. Uh, it was uh, four in favor with Mr. Diggins abstaining. No. Of course. Okay, I think we have now reached the um, item 20, final presentation and vote overnight parking proposal. Uh, and uh, we have Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Diggins. Do you have a, a, a slide? Yes, yeah. thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I, we have a, a PowerPoint that we can walk through, and I want to thank the board and, and, and thank the public in particular that we have been talking about this a lot longer than all of us. Uh, expected uh, when we first brought this up a few years ago or, or started talking about things. Um, and I want to thank Mr. Diggins um, for his collaboration and, and we've been trying to work on a proposal uh, for the full board to consider a pilot program. Um, I thought briefly for the public's benefit I'd step back just a little bit, give a little bit of background and then um, present the proposal that we have come up with for the board's consideration for pilot. Um, so, if, you, if I could just for a second, yeah, give us, give, there we go, we went full screen, we're good to go. Yeah. Okay. So, we have talked about the situation in Arlington where there is the overnight parking ban. Um, there are a series of exemptions or waivers that, that, that are allowed that I want to touch on briefly. But in terms of references that we've made for the public to our rules, the references to overnight parking actually occur in two places in our traffic rules and orders and in our parking policies and regulations. And if Ms. Maher um, brings this forward, this is the reference to the online parking ban that's in our traffic rules and orders. There's a more complete reference in the parking policies, um, if we can go to that. Um, and again, it states that there's no over, overnight parking between the hours of 1 and 7 a.m. Um, if we go to the next slide, however, there are four exceptions that have been applied over the years and, and that are contained within our policies. One is short term. That's if someone is visiting a home or a driveway is being repaired um, or if a car is disabled. And that short term is, and I will go through each exception, that is done through the police department. The next three, the, the temporary or long term in the municipal lot is a treasurer's office request. The final two are select board requests, uh, temporary or long term on street and hardship exemption on street. Um, Ms. Mar thank you. Uh, again, here's a little description of the short term, up to 14 days a year. The reasons that we put in the policy is just as I said, expecting an overnight guest and the two other categories, there's no fee for that. And I will say Mr. Diggins and I did receive some feedback um, from people who um, they may have weekend guests from time to time, family visiting. The 14 days appears to be a hardship for some people. There was some request to extend that. We're not here to do that this evening, but again, something to think about as we go forward. Again, that's issued through the police department. There is instructions in terms of how to contact the police department for that. The second category is municipal lot parking, and this is done through the treasurer's office. And this covers the situation where a family or a household has parking, has a driveway, but has more cars than can fit. And, and what, what happens here is that the resident can go to the treasurer's office, um, it's a dollar a day, and the individual is assigned a parking spot in one of our municipal lots. Um, 
we can move on to the next one. Again, it's discretionary, but this one really is the least discretionary. It's, um, you, you have a car, you could theoretically park it at your house, but you don't have enough room to get three or four other cars or, or two or three other, other cars. The next category is what we often see here um, is the on-street parking issued by the select board, valid for space in front of or adjacent to the permit holder's residence. But the conditions, we just brought them up with Mr. Foley, that, that come up is, it, is, there, a, is there a driveway? Um, is there construction taking place? So we'll do it on a temporary basis. For this one, it's $160 for the first year, $75 per year afterwards. Um, and then the final category that we see is the hardship exemption. This, this came um, just a few years ago where, again, it's for residents. You have to establish that off-street parking is unavailable and that they have a long-term or permanent disability or can't afford off-street parking due to economic hardship. There's no fee for that. We see this often on a, on a temporary basis, both this one and the, the prior um, discretionary where there may be a caretaker that has to come in, a family situation um, on a short-term basis. We also see it on a, on a more permanent basis. So what we did, and we've talked about our waivers and our exceptions, but both Mr. Diggins and I felt like, okay, let's give the board and the public a little bit more information as to what we're doing right now as a town. And so the three discretionary permits in this excludes the short term that are issued by the police, which is an allowance of an overnight. There are 44 permits issued for the municipal lot parking. Um, what I did is, I, and, and I want to thank Ms. Marr for assisting me. She gathered a lot of information, provided a lot of feedback to me, and I think as we went through this, we learned a lot too. Um, the three top precincts here, Precinct 9, Precinct 20, in Precinct 7, and, and what we found here is that for the municipal lot parking, the majority of this is people who are in housing authority properties. For Precinct 20, it's people of Drake Village who park at the Herd Field and on Drake Road. Precinct 9 includes a number of people both at Winslow Towers and at Chestnut Manor. Um, in Precinct 7, you can see it goes all the way down to two. Every other precinct that's represented has no more than one permit. The on-street permits for people who might not have parking available to them. Um, again, the three biggest precincts, and a little bit of a surprise here, Precinct 6, Precinct 8, and Precinct 20 were the top three. And, and this goes to um, what I'm going to get to in a, in a little bit in terms of um, whether we do this town-wide or target it, because when we look at these, at least what's granted, it's all over town. Um, hardship exemption permits, Precinct 19 is the most, and, and, and that's really one property. It, it, it's the new apartment building at 483 Summer Street, uh, has the majority of those. Precinct 1 has five, and Precincts 3 and 6 both have four each. Um, this is what's currently issued by the town. Um, red sticker for the overnight, for the municipal lot, yellow sticker for on street. So this, that sticker program is already in place. Uh, Next slide. Here's the history. I know um, we could probably add a few more slides to specific select board meetings, but again, this, this came out uh, of, of, of articles that were presented um, back in the 2021 town meeting uh, by an individual, Sylvia Dominguez, from, from Precinct 4. Mr. Diggins and I ran two forums, one on June 23rd, 22, the other one February of this year, and then discussions at numerous select board meetings and in the interest of time we've taken that out. Again, this is just for the, more for the public's benefit because I know my colleagues are aware of um, the comment that we had, but this was our actual language uh, when we basically said we're not going to recommend any action on resolutions that were presented back in 2021, but we're committed to further discussion of potential pilot programs and boy, uh, we've held that commitment <laughs> uh, for the discussions. So after numerous discussions, after feedback that's been given to Mr. Diggins and myself and from members of the board at meetings, had discussions with Mr. Pooler, we've had discussions with Chief Flaherty, Mr. Rademacher, um, we've had discussions with residents. This is what we're proposing for the board's consideration tonight. Um, 
and this is a program that originally talked about six months, but where we are in the year, it's a program that would begin August 1st and run until the end of the year, December 31st. It would allow for up to 125 permits town-wide. Um, permit would allow for parking in front of or adjacent to the permit holder's residence. We did receive a lot of feedback from people um, who were just concerned where, where the parking would be allowed. No more than one permit per household and no more than two permits per property. We have a, another series of um, aspects to this too. The cost would be a dollar a day and on top of being able to park in front of your house, every permit holder would receive an assigned space in a municipal lot in the event of a weather emergency. Um, the applications are to be submitted to the select board office and upon approval of the application, payment is to be made to the treasurer's office. And I believe we have the draft application um, and apologize this is a little small, but again, thanks to Ms. Maher for creating this. This has the basic information. What we're asking for or what we're proposing is that an applicant put the reason for the request to. A reason isn't required the way what we saw this evening or, or under some of our other programs, but we felt that if we could hear from the public in terms of why they're asking, it may help us, guide us to make changes or, or um, make further consideration of our parking policies. So that's the, the form there. At the end of the pilot period, what we're proposing is that we consider whether to amend the parking rules and regulations on a permanent basis in light of the demand, resident feedback, town department feedback, and other relevant factors. And um, talking to Mr. Diggins, um, we, while we'd like to do this as quickly as possible, we're looking at a time period uh, between January and March of 2024. Um, if we are able to gather information ahead of time to get to the board, great. But that three-month period we would use to gather feedback and, and just see how much interest. And we selected 125 out of concern just in terms of how the select vote office here in terms of the demand and what they would be able to handle, what we have for stickers, and just to see, because we did receive a lot of feedback about concern that people, um, I think a number of residents, didn't want us to just do this town-wide with an unlimited number. And this is a way to see, okay, what is the demand here and uh, what can we look at um, over the next few months and, and hear back from people? And I know, Mr. Diggins, if you want to add anything to, to, to what I presented here. Um, no, no, thank you. I mean, uh, so there's a, the write-up, uh, uh, the, the edit of the policy, I mean, which uh, you can see. You know, oh, oh, I know, I did, there was one thing I wanted to add, and that is a, whatever we decide, we, uh, I need to really edit me that policy me more. I mean, I tried to limit it to, to the overnight parking stuff, but as I read through it, I mean, there's just formatting issues and some other things I me mean, that are outdated or confusing. I mean, um, and so, so I think we really need to revisit me that that parking policy, whether we do the overnight parking or not. If we decide to do the pilot, we decide to do the pilot, you know, then then I'll do that revision me, at the end. Of the pilot, I mean, um, if we don't, I mean, then I'll do that revision sooner, you know, it's a revision sooner, you know, so that's it. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. One, one other thing, and Ms. Martin, if you could put up the statistics again on the, on the three categories, because the 125 permits, um, they would be inclusive of permits that are issued for municipal lots for those people who want to, who are in a municipal lot, who would want to park in front of their home. I will say a number of those permits, it probably isn't possible because up at Drake Village, for example, there there are spaces assigned and it's a private, Drake Road's a private way anyway. So that that's included in the 44, but the second and third categories, the on-street permits and the hardship exemptions, those would exist, they would be in addition to the 125. So those two categories would not go towards the 125 in, in our proposal. In theory, some of the 44 could. Could I just ask? So does, are you saying that the 44 municipal lot permits would be converted to also giving them permission to park in front of their house it, just to keep that consistent because the cost is the same? Yeah, it, 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 and again, the, the, the 44 in the municipal lot, it, it's really you're not providing a reason other than you don't have room. So 
it's not so much to keep the cost, but I, I, I think there are some people who have asked for that, that if the pilot were available, they'd ask to park in front of the house. There are others that aren't, aren't going to have a choice. Um, but I think for those that do have that option, I think we make it available to them because it's the same price. And so the, it would be um, 150 would include, we would take the 44 off from the, off the top? For the pilot, or the well, for those within the 44 that want to convert, we would take it off the, off, off the 125. And, and I will tell you, I, I I don't know how many less it is. I know yeah. it might even be half that number because of the um, the herd field parking. Yeah, 125 minus 44 minus X. Yeah. So. Um, I had some other stuff, but I, I usually go last, so. Jump again a little bit. Um, I'll turn to my other colleagues. Move we'll approval. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have a motion for approval. Um, and Mr. Hurd? I don't want to even let my brain start making the revisions. And I think we've been through this. No, I, I think this is a reasonable result of our many discussions. And I want to thank Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Diggins for what I can only imagine was many, many, many hours of work on this. Um, so I think at this point, we, we're going to just take a look at what we have in front of us and see how it goes. Um, I think this is something, I, I appreciate the work that's gone into this. You know, I've, I think through our courses of, of, of of our, of our sincere compliance with our promise for discussion. <laughs> I've done that and more. I've had a number of concerns. I appreciate um, the distance we've traveled to address many of them, and this is something I'm happy to support. Um, I have still reservations, but I think I'm comfortable that this is a relatively modest number. I think I'm comforted by the, um, by the statistics that Mr. DeCourcy and, and the team and Mr. Diggins Put together that shows that this is likely to be something that could be utilized, um, spread out perhaps a little bit across town. So I think it, it dilutes some of the some of the concerns I had, um, and you know I think I think it's worth a try. Uh, one recommendation I would make is that we are absolutely clear with people that this is not guaranteed to continue. And I don't know if we want to issue advice along the lines of don't buy a car just thinking that, you, you know, that you'll be able to do this. But I think that that is something that we should, we should contemplate in our messaging. That, the, you know, that at least from my point of view, when we go to evaluate this, if this creates substantial problems in neighborhoods, you know, I'm not sure yet. I don't know. If, you know if, and I think that's the purpose of the pilot. Um, so uh, I'm happy to do this as an experiment. I think you've made a good case for that. Um, but I really would encourage anyone taking part in this to understand that this is this is an experiment, and it is no by by no means guaranteed that we would keep doing it or keep doing it in its current form. Because um, I think my biggest concern with this all along has been that once you start this, it's really difficult to put the genie back in the bottle. So I'm kind of you know drawing that line to say that this really is a this is really is an experiment. Um, so with that, that's all I've got. Uh, Mrs. Mon, did you have anything? I'm just going to be really brief because I feel like <laughs> a broken record over and over and over again. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm going to vote no, but and I feel bad about doing that because I do respect the time and energy in meeting after meeting that Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Diggins and um, the previous chair, Mr. Diggins and current chair, uh, Mr. Helmuth, have really dedicated to this issue and making sure we hear all parts of it. And and, and the only. Not the only, but one of the main reasons why I'm voting no on this is um, sort of could be a reason why I should vote yes, which is what I'm hoping at the end of this process that um, after the information is compiled, if it's on one meeting, um, <laughs> that uh, we perhaps do some modifications, amendments, et cetera, to our uh, policy when they come before the select board. Um, and, and the reason I'm voting no is the reason we started down this road was from a town meeting member who said I have a financial hardship um, when you're talking about socioeconomic fairness and equity, um, the parking program, 
doesn't address that. And what we have before us still doesn't address that um, because we're, we're not really giving out permits, waiving every 125, nobody has to pay for it because they have an eco economic issue. Um, and that's why, only because in terms of uh, what we've heard from quasi from our transportation advisory committee, from you know clean energy, net zero, et cetera, moving forward, um, I think this pilot program is really speaking more to people who have a third, fourth, fifth car and are looking for it to go somewhere. But I do appreciate the fact it's only 125. I, I do fear that um, where it starts a neighborhood issue in terms of, and I hope it doesn't. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to go any, so I, I'm, I'd like to see what comes out of the pilot. I think what we need to do is, you know, keep our big girl, big women and big men britches on when we go forward um, because I don't think this is a town-wide solution. I think that flies in the face of a lot of the uh, decisions, policy committees, subcommittees, MBTA, alternative transportation, the environment, clean energy, um, to talk about a way that everybody can park everywhere in Arlington overnight, and I think it flies in that. But I'll be interested to see what comes out of the pilot program. But really, I think we need to get back. I think this kind of, we got down this road because we didn't want to make some hard decisions with what's before us. And if those decisions are just too hard and too rigid, then after this, we'll get the information and maybe we add one or two more exemptions. So thank you. Sorry for going so long when I said I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah I was just going to keep forgetting about my microphone. Um, so it's starting in about a month. Do we have a plan for when we're publicizing how somebody applies, where we have a limited amount, um, how to get the word out? to the public what the application date is and how one is, should apply just so nobody says, hey, I didn't get one, 125 were given out and nobody told me how to, how to do this? Uh, we don't have a plan yet, you know, uh, but, but, but the, with the go ahead to do that, I, mean, I will then talk to the town manager and to see how, how to go about doing that effectively, hopefully using uh, Ms. Roman I mean, and, and um, work with Ms. Meyer I mean, to you craft the message to me, but it's always been a matter of like not trying to get ahead of where we are. I mean, so I did you know some preliminary work in order to determine you know that APD wanted us to have stickers as opposed to placards. I mean, and then Mr. DeCourcy carried that forward to find out where we were. So, so, so the short answer is no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> got a short answer and a long answer. Yeah. Uh, well, I just like to sum it up, me, but but uh, but also if I can, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to uh, add that that uh, I mean, with respect to the economic hardship, me. There is that I mean, people can get you know, uh, these permits I mean, um, for, for free if they, just like they do on the municipal lot now, if they you know, are, or supply the necessary information I mean, to the select board's office. I mean, and so it is on a first come, sort of first serve basis. I mean, but but I mean, in many discussions with Mr. Um, Hyman, maybe, maybe I just didn't interpret things uh, correctly, and you can correct me, you know, is that we, we we have to create policies that apply to everyone in town uh, pretty much equally, you know, um, and, and so at least, you know, at least give them equal opportunity um, uh, to do it, you know. I mean, if, we, if we are able I mean, to I mean, do sections of towns with certain policies, you know, um, then I would say, I mean, let's have at it. I mean, but that's not how I came away about this. I, mean, I can be incorrect, but I'll, I'll you want to bring this time. Thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? I believe I need a second on that motion, unless I have forgotten. Nobody seconded yet. So we have, we have a, a, a motion from Mr. Hurd. A second. Okay. Um, and Mr. Hurd, just to clarify, your motion is for approval of, of the program. But we're, we're not going into the approving the, the red line added to the parking regulations tonight. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's okay, Mr. Diggins. Sure. That's what you asked for. I think. All right, so on a motion uh, by to, to approve 
the plan by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. We have, Respectfully. Yes, of course. We have a four to one vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for your work. Uh, now we have uh, item number 21, final road vote overriding co and commitments. Uh, two reasons for this item. Uh, the first one is um, that the commitments have been updated slightly to add the um, additional line that uh, Mr. Hurd requested, and I ran the language by him um, informally. So you see that uh, before you that that. Uh, makes a commitment that we will ask the town manager to, to work with department heads to continually look for efficiencies um, with the budget. Um, and second reason is that when we took the first override vote, uh, Mr. DeCourcy was absent due to illness, and this is a really important statement of recommendation to the voters, and I wanted to give the board an opportunity to have a vote with all five members. So I'd like to suggest respectfully, uh, begging the board's indulgence that we, that we do the vote again to authorize the override just so we can get all five members on record. Um, and uh, my traditional, uh, our traditional person to read these complicated motions is Mrs. Mahan, but I know that you usually have these in paper in front of you. Do you have a iPad ready to read the, um, the different sections of the override? No, I don't. Okay, I don't. That's fine. Um, Would you like to do it and I'll say that's my motion? Do you have that? <laughs> I, I do and I will. Oh, thank that's you. good because uh, by, by all rights, uh, we, we rely on Mrs. Mahan for, these, uh, for this. So um, we have two, uh, two motions. Um, and this will become the final official vote of the, of, the, uh, of the select board on these. So we have a motion first to hold a special town election on Tuesday, November 7, 2023. And the second motion will be to approve the override local ballot question. So the first motion, calling an election, um, that uh, we move that the following questions will be placed on the November 7th, 2023 special election ballot as, oh, sorry, now I got ahead of myself. So motion that the town shall hold a special, number one, town shall hold a special election on Tuesday, uh, November 7th, 2023, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the purposes of voting on a proposition two and a half Override question to be approved by the select board and a timely written notice of such election shall be directed to the town clerk in compliance with the Mass General Law, Chapter 54, Section 42C. That's Mrs. Move. Mahan's motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. DeCourcy. So on a motion from, no, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> Trust karma. me, I, it's, I, it's my karma moment. <laughs> We're giving you a hard time, Mr. Former Chair. Oh, you gave me a hard time. I didn't notice. <laughs> we have a um, we have a motion from Mrs. Mahana, second by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say yes. Aye. 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 Opposed. It's a five-zero unanimous vote. I mean, we both have blue shirts on. So. Oh yeah. So the confusion <laughs> is obvious, right? I'm just saying that you're sitting on different sides of me. Uh, and the second motion, the, the following questions shall be placed upon the November 7, 2023 special election ballot as follows. A, Proposition 2 and F override. Shall the town of Arlington be allowed to assess an additional $7 million in real estate and personal property taxes for the purposes of funding the operating budgets of the town and the public schools for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2024? Yes or no? Ms. Mahana, is your motion? <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. So we have a, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, a second by Mr. D. Corsi. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It is a 5-0 unanimous vote. Thank you for your indulgence. I am glad to have all members of the board on record for this really important recommendation. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, you members. Any, any comments? Well, no, I, I appreciate being able to vote again. I, I, and and I, as, as the chair said, I wasn't uh, able to be here on June 5th, but I, I think with the commitments, with everything that we've done in long-range planning in, in terms of uh, laying this out. Um, it, it's we're at that point where it, it's, unfortunately it's necessary to, to ask the voters and, and um, I think we have the reasons we've done our work. There's been a number of months, a lot of good discussion uh, among stakeholders and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the work that's been done and, and, and the request that's being made. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. we're glad that you can join us. Okay, that brings us to board and staff announcements. Uh, Ms. Marr. No board announcements, thank you, Mr. Chair. Attorney Hyde. None, thank you, Mr. Chair. Town Manager Pooler. I have a couple, thank you. Uh, first, 
I know it's been a matter of interest on a lot of members on the board. Uh, the premium pay that we made to uh, our workers who worked during COVID, uh, one group that did not get covered in that or people who had retired uh, during that period but had worked some of that time. Uh, we've looked at the numbers and I can say tonight that we will be able to make those payments to those retirees. Um, I'll be also working on uh, other revisions to the current plan, which I'll pre uh, excuse me present uh, at the July meeting, but I just wanted you to know, and I've already informed some of the retirees that we won't be moving forward in that direction. The second thing I just wanted to mention is I would just show you this picture. I don't think you can see it on TV, <laughs> but uh, we have started replacing our parking meters today. Um, it's been a long, bumpy road. Uh, but we do have new meters. Um, they uh, are smaller than the other ones. They will, where there had been two heads on some of these posts, and now it'll just be one, and you will have to pick A or B, left or right. Um, but uh, they are being installed, and um, we think that then uh, by after the 4th of July, uh, we will then have them in effect. So if everything goes smoothly and we will certainly publicize that. Uh, those are the two things I wanted to mention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cooler. Mrs. Mahan. Well, I have to say, ever since the chair renamed new business to board and staff announcements, Mr. Pooler is, I, I don't know what we're going to do. It's a great time. Every time we, we, we have a patrolman contract settled, we have the uh, <laughs> COVID retiree money, money, but I, I don't, well, kidding aside, I do appreciate, I know that um, every member of the board has certainly weighed in on this um, previously with Mr. Chapdelaine, and unfortunately it fell, or fortunately, uh, in Mr. Pooler's lap on his platter um, to address, uh, thankfully it didn't take you three years, um, <laughs> and I'm happy to have resolution to that um, tonight. It's sort of, I have one other piece, but this is a, segue into that I did have a conversation very briefly with the town manager um, about something I brought up the last meeting and at the last quarterly report by Mr. Pooler and, and Ms. Cody regarding the opera funding um, and I know that that's something uh, that was in the mix but wasn't the only thing at the front of the line it kind of is now with a contract uh, with a patrolman being settled now with the COVID uh, employee reimbursement, uh, but the, I was speaking to Mr. Cooler saying one of the reasons I was concerned about is, you know, hearing and reading, hearing stuff out, out of Washington, D.C., reading the U.S. Treasury Department regarding opera funding and the federal government looking at those uh, monies. Uh, I'm very comfortable with the town manager's former role as a deputy finance director along with Powers and Sullivan for what the U.S. Treasury guidelines were for auditing and reporting, but then there had been discussion, and I'm not caught up as Mr. Pooler is on uh, what's happening down in Washington, D.C., but I know there was some kind of serious discussion and some print uh, regarding uh, Congress and others looking at opera funding and perhaps auditing it and, and asking for some of it back, whether you had allocated and didn't spend it or for a whole other varied, or myriad of reasons, but the town manager informs me, yes, that was discussion and nothing's a given, but I, I probably shouldn't have that concern at the top of my head. So um, I did say to Mr. Pooler, but it's up to the chair, but um, whenever those I don't want the, those important figures, and I understand the coordination with the finance department in Arlington, with the comptroller, and with Powers and Sullivan. Um, take whatever time you need, because I don't want somebody rushing that um, I cause a, a mistake. And then um, my other piece of new business, <clears throat> which I'm going to ask the board administrator, Ms. Marr, to email out tomorrow. I was going to say, please forward to my colleagues as an FYI. I'll be bringing this up under board announcements, but then I said, no, oh, that kind of seems like a violation. Mm -hmm. So, um, although if you're on one of the Arlington lists, you kind of have a sense of it. Um, I did... 
how do I say it briefly? Lots of complaints about yard waste. We heard it at a town meeting from Mr. Ward, and we've heard it from others. Um, it really seems to, um, whenever there's a holiday, that really seems to throw everything off. But yard waste is, you know, some people are two, three weeks behind. Um, had gotten some public Arlington, miss, Arlington list responses, but also some private ones. Uh, so what I did was just because I wanted to, I compiled, and I'm going to smile forward to my colleagues tomorrow, um, especially people who said the second, third week that um, yard waste hasn't been picked up. Uh, just compiled it and, and sent it to the town manager and to um, the assistant town manager, Mr. Feeney. Um, a list of all those streets, elite, the, when they've been out, um, and my new business would be, I've had a conversation with one member of the board, crazy as it is, with Mr. DeCourcy, uh, also with Mr. Feeney. I understand it's Republic. I understand the contract's coming up within a year and a half or so. And I understand there's limited choices that we have out there. Um, but especially with an override coming up uh, and whatever lays down further on down the road, um, one of the things I've asked Mr. Pooler and Mr. Feeney to look into is I've gotten comments that when people contact, right now what they're saying is, hey, I pay my taxes, I expect trash. When I call the town, they say it's not us, it's Republic, call this number. I think the needs to, whether that's actually the response, we need to do a better job of something else. And then it's been reported to me that and I'm sure my colleagues, that when you call that number after Friday, you don't get anyone after 5 p.m. until Monday morning. That's not acceptable. And, and I understand we could say, well, Republic is, Republic's just not doing that job. Well, then we, the town of Arlington, in my opinion, need to look at that and try to figure out a way. And one of the things I would say is, um, and this may be being done, but just me going through the exercise, you'll see the number of streets. I didn't include the people's names, but I have them who reported each of their streets. So it's not just like I went out and said, um, and I can forward that. And they're already out there on a public list, but um, I, I'd like to see a different response from the town. I'd like to see, I understand the override and where the monies are allocated and where it's going to. But I have had conversations, including with Mr. Pooler. Thank goodness we didn't have a, a heavy winter because we really would have been in trouble. Uh, the 16 or so vacancies we have on, on public works, you know, everybody who wants organic fields and everything else, if you don't have the people there to do this. Now this issue with trash and yard waste. Um, it may be it is what it is, and when we go out with a new contract, we get stuck with something that's going to give us lackluster um, uh, service. But um, I really think the town needs to explore what's going on with Republic because this isn't a month thing. It's been since they've had the contract pretty much. I know, and I think you all know. So whatever suggestions we can get from the town manager on that, but also as long as it's not too cumbersome or exhaustive of an exercise, uh, if there's something, I said this to Mr. DeCourcy and he didn't hang up the phone and if he was laughing at me, he put himself on mute. But I said, to me, one of the biggest things the board did, which I wasn't on, it was a pre all of us, was to privatize the trash. We lost all those park and field DPW workers. We watched, we lost all our drivers for snow, ply, snow plows for winter and we got stuck with this trash situation. So I'm um, not saying the town should take back doing trash because we just don't, you know, have the employees and have the infrastructure, the equipment to do that. But um, I have spoken to Mr. Pooler and Mr. Feeney, and now all of you, not just Mrs. DeCourcy, just to kind of keep it out there that when we're talking about mission, you know, mission and goals and, and moving forward, maybe there's an in-between scenario. Um, but I, I really want to get a handle on this um, 
response. Even if the response from the town is similar to what I did this weekend, and I literally spent the whole weekend, you'll see the list, and, and got the information and tried to organize that it was readable. Maybe that's what the person who works for us does. Even, even you know, and then stays in touch with those people, because I said, please let me know, and a lot of that list got cleared today. And it wasn't because of me, it's because um, I also said, please call Republic and put that in. But I'll stop there. Thank you. That's my other new business that we really need to think about, our trash contract and everything else I said. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd, any announcements? I have no new business other than to say I'm glad to see the meters are going in because I had a client today that came in and asked me why some meters work and some don't. And I said, they're actually not enforcing them right now. He's like, well, I just put four quarters in the meter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I get my quarter back? I, I, maybe you should have told clients on their way into it. But. So it will be good for more equitable enforcement of our parking policies. We appreciate all contributions. Mr. DeCourse. Uh, no announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Diggins. I'm thinking maybe you could have the folks from Sustainable Arlington and Zero Waste Arlington handle our, our trash and recycling, you know, so, <laughs> so, so that's, that's it for me. <laughs> and I also have no announcements. Move to adjourn. Second. On a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Shockingly, it is a unanimous vote to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>